football landscape of the Big East has changed. At the birthplace of college football, Rutgers is 3-0 for the first time since 1981 and is one of only four undefeated teams in the Big East. Improved defense has helped. Special teams have helped. But this team is running away from the competition on the legs of Ray Rice and Brian Leonard. Rice is a sophomore who has eight 100-yard games out of his 15 career games, including five in a row. He's fourth in the country in rushing with 166 yards per game. Brian Leonard is a senior who leads the way for Rice and the Scarlet Knights on and off the field. Today, Leonard and Rice hope to lead Rutgers to a 4-0 start for the first time in 26 years. The Bison of Howard University have come to New Jersey looking for their first win of the season. Howard and Rutgers coming up next. Reason number 12, why you should own a Thermospas hot tub. They require no attachment to your home's plumbing. Simply fill it with a garden hose and plug it in. Thermospas unique thermo... For the first time in a generation, autumn has arrived before Rutgers' first loss. Today we are at Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey, where the Bison of Howard take on the 3-0 Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bob Picozzi, along with former Rutgers coach Doug Graber. Two years ago, 1AA New Hampshire made a visit here to the Garden State and escaped with a significant upset of Rutgers. Now, Doug, for history to repeat itself, 1AA Howard will have to rely on a running game, which is chewing up 200 yards per contest. Yeah, you know, they kind of trick you because they run a three and four wide receiver offense, but they want to run the football, and that is exactly what they do. They run it a variety of ways. They have a, a bevy of good backs. Their quarterbacks all run. They run a lot of option football. 204 yards a game is a lot of offense, and they have certainly done it. You see the quarterback here, December, but all their quarterbacks run the football well, as, and that's really a key. And we may very well see three different quarterbacks for the Bison today. Nearly half of their offense is on the ground. But can Howard run the ball against the Rutgers team, which is fifth in the country in scoring defense and tenth in total defense? Rutgers plays stifling run defense there. Front seven is extremely athletic, very well coached. The head coach is the defensive coordinator. And look at this right here. They run extremely well. They're extremely athletic. They stunt. They play pass defense. They turn the ball over. You know, in their last three home games, listen to this, folks. In their last three home games, they've given up a total of 37 yards rushing. That's a total of 37 yards rushing. Here you see they're a violent pass rush. Uh, this is an outstanding defensive football team. Look at the numbers here. This is where they rank in the NCAA. And Rutgers special teams have truly been special. Last week against Ohio, the Scarlet Knights blocked a field goal attempt and put so much pressure on the Bobcats punter, he couldn't even get one of his kicks off. Will the Howard kickers face a similar nightmare today? Opening kick is next. Hi, I'm Steve. Bob Picozzi and Doug Graber back in Piscataway, New Jersey at 12-year-old Rutgers Stadium, all set for the inaugural meeting between Rutgers and Howard. The Scarlet Knights off to a 3-0 start. Howard is 0-2. Both of the losses have come in MEAC play, and there's the head coach of the Bison, Rayford Petty, in his fifth year. There you see his record. Before becoming the head coach at Howard, he was the defensive coordinator at Norfolk State, and before that, the defensive coordinator of the Bison. Greg Schiano in his sixth year at Rutgers a year ago guided the Scarlet Knights to their first winning season since 1992 and Doug this is the Rutgers team which in the latest top 25 poll in the Associated Press was listed third among the schools who received other votes in other words they received the 28th most votes in the country. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, with the win today and depending on what uh, else happens in the top 25, they could very easily, very easily move up into the top 25. And uh, boy, what a job Greg Schiano has done here with this program. Amazing. 1976 was the last time Rutgers was ranked in the top 25. Back then it was a top 20. And that was also the last time Rutgers was undefeated. Howard won the toss, is elected to receive. Rutgers will go from right to left. Jeremy Ito kicks off and back deep on the goal line to return is number eight Leonard Moore and Moore is drilled at the 13 yard line what a hit put by Gene Belgeur so Howard will start off with very poor field position 
with Martin December as the quarterback and he is one of three different quarterbacks that we're going to see at least we expect to see in the ball game today the first two games Doug they've played three quarterbacks yeah and I'll tell you they run this uh, this no huddle offense at a frantic pace and uh, it really can present some problems to the defense December out of the shotgun they operate almost exclusively out of the gun and the handoff goes wow. to the tailback Coleman and he gets nowhere. But Ramil uh, Meekins was was waiting right for him in the gap and he had no chance. The rest of that Howard offense Coleman is the tailback wideouts Moore, Duncan Asumu and Alexander will see as many as eight players at the wide receiver spots and up front Wolford Burns Harmon Russell and Townsell Harmon is a preseason second team all MEAC selection second down and 13 for the bison this time the quarterback Blandon keeps it himself and gets it all the way out to the 26 yard line and he picked up a first down the Rutgers defense up front William Beckford a great speed rusher Ramel Meekins Eric Foster and Jamal Westerman who leads the team in sacks the linebackers Rankert Frierson and Thompson Rankert scored a touchdown on a fumble recovery last week and in the secondary Roberson Gerald Green and McCourty and I'll tell you that was option football on that second play and, and one guy makes a mistake and that's what can happen a big play Coleman is met immediately by Foster looks like he may have lost two yards on the play you know and this no huddle uh, four wide receiver three wide receiver offense spread the field they signal all the plays from the sideline they signal all the audibles from the sideline and, and they can really wear a defense down of the three quarterbacks Blandon is by far the best runner of the three he had a 31 yard touchdown last week against Florida A&M <laughs> And when we talk about the three quarterbacks, they all bring a little something different to the table. And Rayford Perry likes to play all three. Yeah, and, and you know, I don't even know how they can practice and get three quarterbacks ready, but they certainly do. And all three of these young guys are different. Uh, December can run and throw. Uh, Blandon is more of a, a runner, and Hagler really can do both, but he's more of a passer. Third down and 10. Howard. Is eighth in the nine team MEAC and third down conversions. They've converted only 19% of the time. Four man front for the Scarlet Knights, and they send for it. Landed to throw up the left sideline, and it's caught by Hood. He makes the catch for the first down at the Rutgers 46 yard line. Orlando's Hood with his fourth catch of the year. Well, you can see it right here. They caught him in what we call cover two, and that's the area that you have to get the football. They ran a deep corner route, and right there between the corner and the safety, there it is, and it's coming back. 24 yard pickup. But it... On the offense, number 62, penalized 10 yards in the line of scrimmage. Third down. Andre Townsell called for the hold. The referee this afternoon is Jeff McConaughey. So this will be third down and about 20. So what do you co what do you call coach third and 20 first possession when you're back at your own 12 yard line. Well I'll tell you <laughs> what if I'm this offense I want to run some kind of an option and I mean it because that's your best chance for a big play. If you spread them out and one guy makes you miss you got a chance for a big play. Third and 20 the quarterback looks to the sideline the offensive coordinator usually goes get a drink of water. Yeah it's tough. <laughs> Landed on the quarterback draw. Breaks one tackle, and he's hit by Gerald and brought down at about the 26-yard line. So the Rutgers defense is held. And now keep your eye on the Howard punter because the Rutgers special teams have put enormous pressure on the punters so far this year. Well, that they really, really work at it. It's a huge part of their game plan every week. And you got a freshman punter back there, and he, he better be ready for a barrage because I got a feeling they're going to come after a lot of his punts today. His name is Sabrine Nuru, averaging 31 yards per punt, seventh best in the nine team MIA. Good snap. Gets off the punt. It's short. It's caught by Foster. He called for the fair catch. Yep. And Rutgers will have great field position at the 47 yard line following the 27 yard punt. And Mike Teal, who had a rough game last week against Ohio, will lead the Scarlet Knights onto the field. Kenny bounced back. 
Well, th that's really the key thing. And, you know, they're playing great defense. They're running the ball well. Great special teams. The missing ingredient, and really in the last two weeks, is the passing game. And they have to get Teal's confidence going. They have to get him going as they head into Big East play. Rutgers averaging 200 yards per game on the ground. Nearly all of it from their sensational sophomore tailback Ray Rice and they call his number right away and here he goes right at it again pickup of about eight and a half yards on first down for Rice the rest of that Rutgers offense along with Teal Rice is the tailback the fullback is Brian Leonard and he's a great one Clark Harris and all Big East tight end the wide receivers Willie Foster and Sean Tucker and up front for Rutgers Pedro Sosa Mike Fladell Darnell Stapleton, Cameron Stevenson, and Jeremy Zuta. Stapleton is on the Dave Remington watch. He's one of the top centers in the country. Second down and two. And Rutgers goes empty. This is a little bit of a surprise. No backs in the backfield. Two receivers left, three to the right, in and out of the hands of Leonard, and you won't see that very often. Defensively, for Howard, which is 111th in the country in scoring defense. Up front, the defensive line, they have Cooper, Piner, Wooten, and Hardy. The linebackers are Dowdy, Lockett, and Pierce. And in the secondary, Pope, Means, Jackson, and Claiborne. Third and two for the Scarlet Knights. They are th third in the Big East when it comes to converting third downs. Teal, play fake, looks right, throws, and he has his man, and it's going to be a touchdown. Clark Harris, that's got to make Teal feel a lot better. <laughs> well, uh, they ran an out and up pattern, and the uh, Bison didn't have an answer for it. And give Teal credit, he put that one right on the money. And the outstanding, outstanding tight end of Rutgers, Clark Harris, he knew exactly what to do with it. And I'll tell you, that's a, a huge, huge quick start and a great third down conversion. Harris has now caught at least one pass in 34 consecutive games. It was his second touchdown catch of the year. The second touchdown pass of the year for Teal. In to attempt the extra point is Jeremy Ito. He's 9 for 10 this year. He had made 66 straight before missing one two weeks ago against Illinois. So just like that, the Scarlet Knights jump all over Howard. Their special teams gave Howard poor field position. Their defense gave the offense great field position. And on third down, Teal to Harris. 45 yards and a 7-0 lead. It was a choke. However, Howard will wind up with much better field position because of the touchback. Well, from the 30-yard line, that, that was a heck of a boot, and there is no wind at all here today, folks. It is dead still, so that was uh, that was all natural. That was all with his foot. Great job by Ito, who you see right there. Young man from California. Howard started its first possession at the 14, this one from the 20, and Blandon once again is the quarterback. Out of the shotgun, the tailback with him is Coleman. Looks left, throws, incomplete. He had his man. He was open. But he just overthrew his receiver, Hood, who caught an apparent first down pass on the first possession, but it was wiped out by a holding penalty. You know, in, in, in this Howard offense, you see him lining up right here and getting the play from the side. Look at the splits of the wide receiver. I mean, they really, really spread the field. That takes a, a, a cannon for the quarterback to get that quick throw all the way to the outside. Two wide receivers to each side. Howard opened the year with a loss to Hampton. We're going to get a, looks like a false start. Yeah, the right tackle moved. Right of the snap. False start. On the offense, number 62. Yards from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. So the second penalty on Rayford Petty's club, and they've both been on his right tackle, Andre Townsell. He just called for holding first drive. Yeah, it, you know, you really don't want to help this Rutgers defense at all because they rush the passer so well. You see right here, see, there's which, the Which one's the guy you pay attention to? Well, they got five guys signaling. One of them is live, and that changes during the game, so you're not going to steal their signals. Landed. Good pass protection. Rolls right by some more time, and he hits his man Hood, but it is going to be 
caught back at around the 14 yard line, maybe even lost a yard. Yeah, he did. Another flag on the play. Wow. And this will go against the Bison as well. Well, you know, you lost yardage on the play now. You're only going to get half the distance uh, that they very well may turn this down. Holding, Holding. on the offense, number 77. That penalty's declined. Third down. Sean Wolford, 6'2, 270 pound sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina. Take a look at him. He's at the left of your screen. Yeah, number 77. 77 right there. Well, that's <laughs> that's a pretty good tackle takedown. right there. That's a takedown. So, as you suggested, Rutgers declined the penalty. Instead, putting Howard into a third and 16 situation. Mostly, Mostly audibles here. 0 for 1 on third down. Rutgers showing blitz. On the keeper, it's Blandon. He's going to get the first down and take it all the way out to the 34-yard line before he's brought down by Courtney Green. That is exactly what we talked about with option football on third and long. If one guy makes it's assignment football, somebody's got the quarterback, somebody's got the dive, somebody's got the pitch. They totally bust here in terms of who has the quarterback. Nobody has the quarterback. That's a, a terrible bust on defense. Results in a first down. And we're going to get a illegal hands to the face penalty called against the Scarlet Knights. Their first penalty of the day. Now let me ask you something, Doug. This is a, the sort of offense that Rutgers probably won't face again Personal all foul. year. Hands to the face on the defense number 11. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. It's on Derek Roberson. Yep. First time all year, only time all year, probably Rutgers will see an offense quite like this. How difficult is it in the limited time you have to get ready for an opponent to prepare for something that you, you haven't seen and you won't see again? Well, they're going to see this style of offense, but not one that runs the football as much as they do. I mean, in their big game against South Florida next week, they run this very similar spread offense, but they don't run as much option. That's the big difference. Antoine Rutherford, who was considered doubtful to play today, gets his first carry. Did not play last week, his seventh carry of the year. Here's a young man who three years ago as a freshman was a first team all MEAC performer and he rushed for 1,050 yards and he had five touchdowns against Norfolk State. Watching him in warmups, he was doing almost nothing on the field in warmups. Yeah, that's a little bit of a surprise. Well, you know, that third and 15 conversion, that actually was a 30 yard uh, a game for them with the penalty. This time the handoff, no, fake the handoff. Didn't fake out Foster or Rankert though. Throws them down at the 45-yard uh, line, a loss of about four on the play. Take a look at it here now. Here, there was no question. Watch this right here. See the dive fake, and watch right here. Two people have the quarterback there. Not going to make that mistake again. I guarantee you. Coach Ciano said, "Hey, if you got the quarterback, take the quarterback, please." Four carries for 39 yards for Blandon. Third down for the Bison. They are one for two on third downs. Thus far here in the first quarter, Blandon rolls right, looks, and he's going to throw deep upfield, and it's nearly intercepted by Courtney Green. He had an acrobatic interception in the end zone a week ago, and Howard will have to punt. Yeah, and that's the sprinter, and they, they really, really like to sprint these quarterbacks to the corner. And that was very, very well pressured by Rutgers. They brought the linebacker to contain, which is exactly what you have to do. So, Nuru into punt once again. His first one was only 27 yards, and that helped Rutgers have great field position for their first possession. Foster back deep at his own 20 to return. Last year, he was the Big East Special Teams Player of the Year. Kicks it to the right. Foster calls for a fair catch again, and Rutgers will begin at its own 28-yard line. A 45-yard touchdown pass from Teal to Harris has Rutgers on top early. Look at the Howard offense on the sideline. The Bison scoreless today, and Doug, they're averaging only 15 points per game in their first two games. Yeah, but they've run the ball well. You know, really, most of their problems have come from the defensive side where they're giving up 470 yards per game. Leonard in motion, offset eye behind the quarterback, Teal. The pitch goes to Rice. Tries to cut back and picked up maybe a yard on the play. 
Tackle made by Robert Dowdy, senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, who is fifth in the MEAC in tackles. At halftime, we will take a look around both the Big East and the MEAC. Big MEAC game tonight, not far from here at Giant Stadium, the annual New York Urban League game between Hampton and Morgan State. We'll tell you more about that at halftime. Leonard in the slot to the left on second and nine. Leonard, an outstanding receiver out of the backfield. Teal looks at him. Instead, he throws to choice number two, huh. Campbell, and he underthrew him. Well, that, that was a very simple route. That was, And that's what they wanted to do, to give Mike Teal some simple reads early to try to get him out of his funk and get his confidence going. That was just a, a route to the flat and a curl route. You only have to read one defender, and, and he missed his read again. I'm sure that uh, offensive coordinator Coach Versteg is very perplexed at exactly what's going on with Mike Teal. He, they, they really have to get him going as they head into the Big East Conference. Which they will do next Friday night at USF in Tampa. On the blitz, and Teal is sacked. The blitz came from the left side, and safety, Arondo Jamison. Sophomore, speaking of Tampa, that's where he's from. And it looks like Teal never saw him. Yeah, I'll tell you what happened. That was Sam Johnson, the tight end, who was involved in the protection to the right, and he just simply got beat. You see, 85, he recognized the blitz too late, and Teal had no chance. So in the punt will be Joe Radigan. He leads the Big East and is 12th in the country, averaging 45.1 yards per kick. Back deep to receive is Leonard Moore. He's standing at his own 17. He'll move forward. Catches it at the 28. Finds a little room around the right side and is brought down at the 42 yard line. So much better field position for the Bison. They started out at the 14, then at the 20. This time they'll start out at around the 40. up on the Rutgers punt. Yeah, he really was. He took a, you see the hit right here. Watch him right here to the left of your screen, right there on his left knee. There's the hit right on it, and that could be devastating for Rutgers. That's their great senior tight end. He was able to walk off the field on his own power, being worked on along the sideline side by trainer David McCune, Dr. Robert Monaco. Meanwhile, following the 14-yard return, Pretty good field position, best field position of the day for Howard, but nothing doing on first down on the carry by Coleman, who went to H.D. Woodson High School right in Washington, D.C., so he's playing his college football in his hometown. And that was uh, Jabal Westerman and, and Meekins, who were, you know, th this Rutgers front is so athletic up front. I really enjoy watching them play. They stunt. They're small, but they stunt. Here you see Howard and rushing right here. This is Blandon now. 41 yards and rushing by the quarterback. Wow. Two backs out of the shotgun. Quick toss across the middle. Hood with the catch. And it looks like he's going to be just short of the first down inside the Rutgers 49 yard line. Orlandis Hood is a junior from Long Beach, California, who had two catches for 29 yards last week against Florida AM. That was a nine yard gain. You know, th it, this is without question. Uh, the toughest opponent that Howard has ever had. They've played uh, two other times. They've played a 1A team, but never one that is close to being ranked in the top 25. And you know what? Uh, these kids are playing their heart out. They're playing well. They're executing. You've got to give them a lot of credit. They're certainly not intimidated by Rutgers. That's for sure. Our first measurement of the day. And wow. The Bison got it. They got a very, very favorable spot right there. I, I thought he was about a yard short, but uh, they got a good spot. And uh, and give a Bladen credit. He put it right on the money. He ran a quick slant, and he put it right on the money. As far as that matchup, Rayford Petty told me we're excited. It's a great opportunity. Rutgers is the best team that Howard has ever faced. First and ten for the Bison in Rutgers territory for the first time at the. Scarlet Knights 48 yard line, 7 0 Rutgers on a Teal to Harris touchdown pass. Antoine Rutherford with the carry. Picked up perhaps a yard and a half on the play. You mentioned, Doug, the only two previous meetings against 1A opponents. Howard lost to Akron and lost to Temple. And in fact, the Bison, going back to the end of last season, has lost six straight games entering this contest. 
Yeah, it's, things are really on a bit of a downturn here for the Bison. And, of course, the MEAC is tough now. You, you know, the, there's a lot of good football. Hampton's not the only really good team in that league. There's a lot of good football teams. Florida a and I mean, it's a heck of a league. Out of the shotgun, Blandon. Rolls left, throws. Incomplete, short. He tried to hit Larry Duncan across the middle. And it will be a third down and eight. Yeah, and that's that's tough on a quarterback. When you sprint out to your left and you're a right-handed quarterback, that is a very difficult throw, really hard to get your hips turned. Take a look at it right here. Sprinting to his left. He's got to get his hips, and he can't do it because he has pressure. You've got to get those hips flipped all the way around to make that throw, and he wasn't able to do it. Landon started in the Hampton game. He's thrown only 18 passes. Entering this afternoon's game. Third down and eight. The Bison one of three on third down this afternoon. And this one will be whistled dead. Did the play clock run out? Right of the snap. Delay a game. Yep. yep. On the offense number 15. Five yards from the line of scrimmage. Third down. Third penalty for the Bison totaling 20 yards. The Bison actually is the least penalized team in the MEAC. Only 12 penalties for Rayford Petty's team totaling 82 yards entering today's game. Yeah, and this is the fourth already early in the game in the fourth third and long uh, they have had to have attempt against this Rutgers defense and the one that was successful was when they ran the option. Please reset the game clock to 405. 405. They ran the option and in, in, uh, in Rutgers, nobody took the quarterback. They had an assignment mistake. You always, always, even on third and long, uh, have to be assignment pure in case you get the option. Even if you're blitzing, you've got to have it accounted for. Rutgers in their nickel defense. A 4-2 on third and 13. This is an audible now because Rutgers is in cover two. Play clock down to four, and Beckford jumped off sides. You know, and I, and I noticed this on tape. If if you watch Blandon at quarterback, he really uh, jumps his arms. Prior to the snap, ball starts. On the offense, wow. 62. Wow, five that's five yards. So Third down. The well, ball he, is at Townsell drew Beckford offside, and it has been a rough afternoon so far for Townsell trying so. to block the quickest member of that Rutgers front four. Yeah, but, uh, Beckford it can really bring it. He is explosive coming off the football. Number 35 to the left of your screen. Young Rich. guy from Belt Lake, Florida. He can yep. flat bring it. Greg Ciano told me this week. He is just learning how to use the speed at the position because he is converted from linebacker, but he has tremendous speed. And here he comes. On the quarterback draw, <laughs> Landon will get it out to his own 48-yard line. So it is fourth and 14, and the Bison will have to punt yet again. And that was Beckford that from the left end position that ran him all the way down from behind. Uh, man, he, he can really run. He is so explosive. And now we've got this young uh, freshman punter, Nuru, who, uh, again, they, but he's not going to have any pressure here because Rutgers is in a punt safe. They're not even going to come after this one. Nuru's had punts of 27 and 24 yards. Foster back at his 20. High spiraling but short kick does take a very favorable bison bounce. And we'll go out of bounds at the Rutgers 14 yard line. So the Scarlet Knights take over. So far, the Howard offense, Doug, has consisted of quarterback Will Blandon. Well, uh, him all the way, and you see him right here, makes the guy miss on the quarterback draw. Uh, you know, he's only 5'8, but very, very quick and explosive. Here's another quarterback draw. And of course, here's the option play where nobody took the quarterback. And, uh, you know, that, that was on a third and 12, so that was a key play. 38-yard punt by Nuru. And the Scarlet Knights, who scored on their first possession, only took them a minute six to go 53 yards in three plays and had to punt the ball away on their second. This time, the handoff to Rice. And he just moves his way forward for eight yards. I was talking to Greg Shiano this week, and I said, are you concerned at all about Rice's durability at 31 carries on opening day, 29 last week. He said, yeah, we're a little concerned about the number of carries, but 
it's awfully tough to resist giving it to him because he's so effective. We think he can take the wear and tear. He can, and, and if you look at his legs, he is really, really put together. He's got a great set of pins under him, great strength, great explosiveness. Uh, boy, he can be a great one. Three carries for 17 yards for Rice. Teal looking up the middle for Tucker. He had his man beat, but he overthrew him. Well, you know what? That's a little bit on Sean Tucker because he, he, you know, he kind of hesitated just a little bit and he didn't run all the way through the route and he really put his quarterback in a tough position. But really, this is the throw that Mike Teal has got to make because he's got him wide open right there. He's got to make that throw. And again, uh, we see the same thing that we saw last week. We see Mike Teal just struggling a little bit. And now, of course, you got a third about one and a half. Scarlet Knights one of two on third downs. They scored a 45 yard touchdown on the first one. Rice cuts back. He's hit behind. Doesn't get the yards needed. Big hit made by James Robinson. A sophomore from Verona, Pennsylvania. So for the second consecutive Rutgers possession, the Bison forced the Scarlet Knights to punt. You know, and, and from uh, when you're coaching you can almost see something like this coming Rutgers is not playing real well here in the first quarter uh, Greg Schiano was very very displeased with their practice this week in fact threw the whole <laughs> team off the field yeah, a little bit I, I've done that a couple times on too. Tuesday yeah but uh, you know what you can just see it coming up coming off uh, two big really three big wins oh, look at this punt by wow. Radigan are you and more oh. fun with the ball and it's recovered by Townsend so there you go there's the special teams play Radigan with the big big punt and more with the careless attempt to catch it and Townsend who is the young man who nearly blocked the punt last week is all over it to recover the ball at the Howard 12 yard line. Unbelievable. And, and take a look at this right here. He hit a low driving punt that's very very he really should have just let it go because those are tough to handle. He's had in the last two three weeks a 78 yard punt a 66 yard punt and that one there of course was a 60 yard punt and recovered special teams <laughs> special teams special teams. They are special. Just outstanding Radican a 6'5 220 pound senior from Hoboken New Jersey. So a great opportunity for the Scarlet Knights. Here's Rice and look at the penetration made by the strong safety Randall Means. He snuffed that one out. You know and one of Greg Schiano's biggest concerns coming into this game is you there are very multiple on defense. Take a look at it right here and you're not sure what you're going to get. And of course that was the safety that was in great shape. Randall Means right up at the line of scrimmage. A tackle for a loss. Transfer from Ball State, the junior from Detroit, eighth in the MEAC in tackles. Second and 11 for the Scarlet Knights. Handoff Rice cuts back to his right. Wow. Still on his feet. And it looks like he's got the first down at about the four. Ray Rice, who entered the game with five consecutive 100 yard rushing performances, goes for 15 to pick up the first down. You know, and Bob, the best thing about this series for Rutgers is big number 81, Clark Harris, right. is back in the game, and that's huge because I, I really didn't like the looks of that. And take a look at it here and look at the balance that Ray Rice has. Uh, boy, he is special. Two tight ends, Harris to the right and Johnson to the left. Harris in motion. Hand off, Rice. He's hit at the line of scrimmage by Hardy and then gets plenty of help from his teammates. Lockett was there, and so was Marvin Wooten, but Hardy made the initial penetration, and Rayford Petty considers Hardy his best pass-rushing defensive lineman. He's a senior from Hartford. So this is a Howard team, which is 110th in the country in one double-A in total defense. They allow 470 yards per game, they allow 38 points per game. But so far, after the first 15 minutes today, the 3 0 Scarlet Knights have only been able to put up seven points. It's been the running of Blandon and the touchdown pass from Teal to Harris. 7 0 Rutgers as we head for the second. There's a guy you don't want to get upset. 
James Gandolfini, a.k.a. Tony Soprano, a very proud Rutgers alum. Bob Picozzi and Doug Graber here at Rutgers Stadium ready to start the second quarter. The Scarlet Knights leading Howard 7-0. Second and goal Rutgers from the Howard 5. James Gandolfini, a huge supporter of the Rutgers athletic program. Teal out of the shotgun. Leonard is the lone setback. And it's Leonard wow. for his first touchdown of the year. And listen for the Bruce Springsteen song. They promised to play Born to Run every time <laughs> Leonard took it in for a touchdown at home this year. This is the first time he's done it. Outstanding senior, Heisman Trophy candidate, and very unselfish player. You know, happy to let Ray Rice get most of the carries. They, they, they do a great job of utilizing him, getting him the football as a runner, mainly as a receiver. Very, very fast. Leonard's 41st touchdown of his career, most in Rutgers history. And entered the game as third in career touchdowns among all active Division 1A players. Ito with the extra point. So Rutgers has converted a short field into both of its touchdowns. It was a 53-yard drive after a short punt. And then Leonard takes it in for five yards. Of course, a very brief drive because of the fumble recovery on the Howard punt. Tony likes that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's really an interesting story. Both Leonard and Ray Rice, both natives of New York, uh, both heavily recruited, uh, both heavily recruited, of course, by Syracuse, and Rutgers was able to get both of them. And boy, what, what, what a difference it's made to this program. Of course, Ray uh, Leonard, a senior, and Rice just a sophomore, but two, and, and you know what's the nice thing? Both are outstanding, outstanding young men, good students, uh, really good people, unselfish players. Uh, they got a couple good ones from New York right there. Greg Schiano says that Brian Leonard is a special football player. He runs, blocks, and catches, and he's as unselfish as they come. He will become a terrific pro. I'll tell you who he really reminds me of, of course, because I live in the Tampa area. I do the uh, We've Bucks. We've reset the game clock to 1456. 1456. I, I do the Bucks preseason games and a weekly show down there in the uh, Sunshine State. Really, really reminds me of Mike Allstott. I mean, very similar type player, kind of what I call a hybrid fullback. I mean, he, he's really more of a runner and receiver than he is a pure fullback. I'll tell you what, John Gruden might be able to use Brian Leonard. His, Boy, the way his, things are going, his team he, he next, needs a lot of help right the now. The next touchdown they score will be the first touchdown they score so far this season. It's been ugly in Tampa. Ito on the kickoff. He drove the last one into the end zone, and he does it again. So successive touchbacks for Ito, and Howard will take over at the 20-yard line. Again, it was the 60-yard punt by Radigan forcing the Howard punt return specialist Moore to go back and then Moore mishandled it and James Townsend the first man down the field recovered it creating wonderful field position for the Scarlet Knights so their two touchdown drives Doug have been 53 yards in a minute six and 17 yards in a minute 47. Yeah, you know, and, and Howard is playing real well here you see Blandon and his numbers Howard is playing well they've just had those two big plays uh, the long Pass to Harrison, of course, the fumbled uh, a punt. First and ten. Landon fakes the handoff, rolls right, throws, and he has his man Terry Perry. Pick up of about nine to make second and one. Perry's third catch of the year for 23 yards. He had one catch a year ago for 11 yards. He was a kick return specialist last season as a sophomore. He's from Miami. You know what, and thus far, this Howard offense has given Rutgers fits, uh, much more so than North Carolina, Illinois, or Ohio last week. Uh, they are really giving them fits. Landon with all kinds of time. Looks, throws, uh -oh. in and out of the hands. Wow. And on, on the deflection, it's caught by Larry Duncan. <laughs> it went in and out of the hands of the tight end, Charlie Richards, and you can forgive him because tight ends rarely play in this in this Howard offense. Pretty but fortunate right here. Pretty fortunate right there. 
And I tell you what, give hey, give Howard, give the Bison credit. They are doing a great job of moving the football. Nobody has done this to Rutgers. Nobody. Duncan's third catch of the year, Blanded on the keeper, and we'll get penalty markers all penalty over the place. The One of them was thrown by the referee from his vantage point behind the quarterback. Either a face mask or a hold. I don't know which, but probably one of those two. Jeff McGonaghy is our referee this afternoon. Yep. And it is a face mask penalty against Howard. Penalties have killed the Bison early today. Rayford Petty, graduate of. Face mask. On the offense, number 62. <laughs> 15 yards, beat first down. It has been a long, long one quarter and minute and 22 seconds for Andre Townsell. That's the fourth penalty wow. he's been charged with. One of them, Rutgers, declined. He was called for a hole, a couple of false starts, and now a face mask. Yeah, and he just uh, trotted off the field and he just took a seat on the bench. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, all of us coaches, you know, you, you could just take so much. <laughs> Replaced by Torrance Simon. Senior from Manning, South Carolina. He's in there at right tackle. Five penalties for 40 yards for the Bison. Blandon throws and he threw the ball behind his intended receiver on that particular play. And again, really, really tough on the quarterback when you're going to your left to get your hips and shoulders turned around. Take a look at it right here. Really, and of course, <laughs> the pressure, uh, you know, from Beckford and everything make it tough as well, but that, that's, that's a tough throw. Really takes an athlete at the quarterback position to be able to make those kinds of throws. Charles Hatton, the intended receiver, he doesn't have a catch this year. Blandon on the keeper. Gets out of the grasp of Green and is finally driven out of bounds by Beckford at the 38 yard line. Pickup of 12. Boy, Blandon has been impressive. He's strong. He's, you know, he's only 5'8, but he's 185 pounds. But look at his strength right here in breaking this tackle. Now, this is a Rutgers defense that has been stifling against the run this year, the top in the NCAA. Rutgers is. Allowed only 76 yards per game on the ground, minus six against Ohio last week. Third and 13 for Howard. Rutgers showing blitz, and we're going to get, I think, another false start. And I think this time it's going to be on the new right tackle, Simon. Part of the snap, false start on the offense, number 79, five yards in the line of scrimmage, third down. So Simon having the same problem Townsell has with the Quickness of Beckford, just trying to anticipate Beckford's movement, jumping too soon. You know, uh, offensive. Here you see Coach Petty talk. Offensive linemen, you know, they watch these tapes all week. They see how explosive and how quick Rutgers is. They know if they don't get out of their stance, they're going to be in trouble. And that is exactly what's leading to all of these uh, movement penalties. Only three defensive linemen on this play for the start of night. Three-man rush. Hand off Coleman on the draw. Gets it out to the 41 yard line, and all that will accomplish is give a little more room for the punter, New Roof. That was uh, Jamal Westerman, big number 90, a young man from Brampton, Ontario. How do these coaches find these guys all over the country like that? But they do. And they've done a good job of it here at Rutgers. Westerman is second in the Big East in sacks with two and a half. Punt. Punt safe again. This is surprising me. They're not coming after this freshman punter. Nuru has averaged 29.7 yards per punt in his first three. This may have been his best one. Another fair catch called for by Foster at the 24 yard line. A touchdown pass from Mike Teal to Clark Harris and a five yard run by Brian Leonard have given Rutgers a 14 0 lead. Rutgers has only had the ball for six minutes and 14 seconds, but the Scarlet Knights have taken advantage of opportunities to take a 14 nothing lead over Howard. First and 10 for the Scarlet Knights at their own 24 yard line. Teal out of the shotgun with Rice and Leonard in the backfield with him. Handoff Rice. And he is stopped after a short gain 
by Edwin Piner, who's Howard's best defensive lineman. What makes Rice so effective in your view, Doug? Well, it, it, first of all, he's got such great strength. And, uh, you know, if you look at him right here, uh, you know, he, he is low to the ground, 195 pounds, but so, so strong for a running back. Second and he's got great vision, got a great burst. He's got a great heart. Uh, you know, hey, eight of the 15 games he's played, he's been over 200 yards, 100 yards, excuse me, but he's had two 200-yard games already. For the opening day against North Carolina, they called his number again. He gets out to the 29-yard line. Well, you know, this is very simple what's happening here. H Howard, to give him a lot of credit, they are putting eight and nine in the box. Uh, they are going to force Mike Teal to throw the football. And I'll tell you what, in my opinion, uh, Rutgers has got to get Teal going. Coach Ciano and that offensive staff, uh, they have to get Teal going. They have to get some confidence in him. And now they're going to start spreading it out right here on third and five. And, uh, you know, Howard is just saying, hey, Teal is going to be the have to. He's the guy that has to beat us. He's one of four today. It went for a touchdown. Overthrows a wide open Dennis Campbell. Scarlet yeah. Knights one of four now on third down. And, and it's amazing. You know, he started the season in the first game against North Carolina. He played great. Uh, his efficiency was 140. In the next game, it was a 70 against Illinois. Last week it was I think 47. He's really been going on a downward trend and it's really his confidence. It's all his head. He's practicing well, but he just he, he's starting to really get antsy throwing the football. Had three picks last week. More back to return this pun. He was standing 55 yards from the line of scrimmage. He does move forward, but not too much. And after a short return, the hit on the open field made by Manny Collins, another member of that outstanding Rutgers special teams. This was a 52-yard punt by Radigan. Next time he might stand in the end zone to receive the punt. He's been a real weapon. The sun has come out here in Piscataway, and so is another outstanding crowd. Rutgers in the previous two weeks drew crowds of 41,000 in back-to-back -back games for the first time in their history. The stadium opened up in 1994, and my partner today, Doug Graber, who was the coach back then, had an awful lot to do with the stadium, its design, and every step of the way. And I know, Doug, last, last week when you were here to do the game against Ohio was your first time on campus since leaving Rutgers following the 95 season. And I know you are very, very proud of, of what was built here during your watch. Well, I really am. And uh, this is exactly what we had in mind to see it in a sea of red and the great crowds like this. It's a great, great natural setting for college football with all the uh, green in the end zone. And it just, uh, you know, from the very top of the upper deck on a clear day, you can actually see into uh, New York City and the Empire State Building. It's a great setting, and you know, this is the only stadium in the world that has teeth in it. We'll get into that in a minute. That's not a Tony Soprano story, is it? No. <laughs> On second down, Blandon might be changing the play. Fakes the handoff, then pitches oh. the fumble. And it's picked up by Jerome. And he'll run it back inside the 15-yard line. Frierson had the first crack at it. He could not pick it up. But Gerald, who blocked the field goal last week, does. And it's the second turnover for the Bison. And again, great field position for the Scarlet Knights. Well, take a look at it right here. They ran the option, but the wide receiver missed the block on Derek Roberson. And that was the result right there. Assignment football. And boy, Roberson was all over it. Take a look at it. There's the receiver that missed the block. Nice job, Roberson. And now bend the knees, scoop it up, and let's go. Take a look at it again. And there you see again. Uh, that was uh, Ulysses Alexander that missed that block right there on Roberson. Twelfth, got to build a block in this offense. I'm sorry, Bob. Twelfth turnover created by the Rutgers defense this year. That's tops of the Big East. Rice did a wonderful job making something happen on that play. He demonstrates such patience. Yeah. He, he really does. And, and it's something you can't teach. Young runners either have it or they don't. He's got a great feel for setting up his blocks. And, uh, you know, he's like a lot of great backs. Take a look at the turnovers. He's like a lot of great backs, Bob. 
he just gets better as the game wears on. He gets into a groove, he gets his adrenaline going, and uh, he is fun to watch. Rutgers plus five in the turnover department for the season. Second and goal from the four. In motions, Tucker. Hand off Rice again. Gets inside the four yard line. Stop was made by Daniel Pierce, who was second in the MEAC in tackles. He's a junior from Norfolk. Before this drive, which again was set up by the fumble, Rutgers was being outgained by Howard 98 yards to 78 yards, but Doug, 70 of those 78 yards for Rutgers were on their two touchdown drives. They had a 53 yard drive and a 17 yard drive. So the Rutgers offense has struggled. There are two fouls in a play. Personal foul on the defense, number two. Personal foul on the offense, number four. Both lates hit after the play. Penalties offset, second down. Infractions on Sean Tucker of Rutgers and Jeffrey Pope of Howard. Correction, third down. Actually, they got the number wrong again. Uh, that was Dennis Campbell for Rutgers number five that was involved in just a little bit of extracurricular uh, with Mr. Pope. And by the way, Jeffrey Pope is an outstanding corner for Howard. And, you know, they've had a defensive back drafted out of Howard both of the last two drafts. They really have had some great, great defensive backs. On third down and two from the four. Rice is out of the game. Leonard is the lone setback. And he'll get the ball. He cuts back. He's got the first down. Looks like he may have been able to get as far as the one yard line. And it will be first and goal for the start of night from there. We'll take a look at this. And this offensive line uh, is really starting to get some movement here. Nice cut right there. Beautiful movement by the offensive line. A staple to the center I've really been impressed with in the last two weeks. Uh, you're right there, you're looking at Pedro Sosa, 77, but Fladell, Cameron Stevenson, uh, Jeremy Zuda, uh, that is a big athletic offensive line that is starting to wear down Howard. Three tight end look, Leonard, second effort, touchdown. Leonard's 42nd career touchdown and his second of the day. And yeah. the 29th rushing touchdown of his career. And he's now all alone in fourth place in Rutgers history in that category. Well, you know, Rutgers has had some great, great running backs in the past. J.J. Uh, Jennings, uh, Bruce Presley, Terrell Willis, who both played on my watch here at Rutgers, were, uh, were great, great running backs. And now you got Leonard and Rice, so the tradition continues. Again, the Rutgers touchdown set up by the turnover. Howard's mistakes are absolutely killing the Bison today. Ito for the extra point. So it was a teal to Harris 45 yard touchdown pass that Rutgers got on the board first and that young man Brian Leonard the senior from Gouverneur New York who's a nominee for the Doak Walker Award and the Maxwell Award has scored the last two touchdowns a five yard run and a one yard run and he has a school record 42 touchdowns in his career 29 of them on the ground. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting. The main reason that he chose Rutgers is he had an older brother that was recruited by a lot of people that uh, tore his knee up as a senior in high school, and Rutgers was the only school that stuck by their scholarship offer, and uh, he showed a tremendous amount of loyalty to his brother and Rutgers uh, for sticking with him. His brother's a very successful uh, broker here now in the state of New Jersey and that's why he came to Rutgers and so it really paid off in a big way to do things the right way. His brother dined at the same restaurant we dined at last night. Did he? Yeah. He said hello to a member of our dining party on the way out of the restaurant in New Brunswick. I saw a lot of Leonard jerseys in this crowd last week and looking out I see a bunch of them today too so he's uh, number 23. A pretty popular guy here in Piscataway, New Jersey. Speaking of the crowd, I asked Greg Schiano this week, I said, do you pay attention at all the rankings now that you're inching closer and closer to the top 25? He said, honestly, I don't. I haven't spoken them to them about the rankings. We don't want to get into that, but it's only human nature for them to pay attention to such things. And a little bit early, we showed a shot of that student body. There's a, Tony Soprano's no longer a student. <laughs> but he is wearing Leonard's jersey, number 23. Yes, he is. I'll tell you who pays attention when the rankings come out each Sunday. 
That's the Rutgers fans. No matter what Greg Schiano says, he won't be able to stop that. On the kick return, it's Moore. And he's driven backwards by Kevin Malist on special teams and also Blair Bynes. You know, and Rutgers alumni across the country have really, really uh, embraced this team in a big way. I was told before the game, the Rutgers Club of Southern California is meeting today. Let's see, it's a, it is about 11 o'clock out there right now, and they're all together watching this game, as are alumni clubs around the country. First and 10 for the Bison at their own 21-yard line. Rayford Petty has stuck with Blandon as his quarterback. Hand off Rutherford, and he gets nowhere. Devron Thompson was the first man to hit him. His helmet got discharged on the play. Thompson bruised the knee last week against Ohio, but he's good to go. Was named to the Big East Weekly Honor Roll last Sunday for his performance in the win over Ohio. Pass to the right in and out of the hands of Hood. Ball wasn't accurately thrown, but it was a very catchable throw nonetheless. And I tell you, and I just saw Courtney Green go off the field. Uh, he got chopped. And of course, uh, you know, when you run an option offense, these wide receivers, they're going to block, and they better block. And uh, Courtney Green got chopped and was not able to protect his legs, and he just went limping off. They're great safety. Replaced by his high school teammate, Glenn Lee. They went to high school along with Ray Rice at New Rochelle High School. On the run to the left, nice throw and completion by Blandon for the first down. That time he didn't have any pressure and he was able to get his hips and shoulders turned and he threw it right on the money. And of course, uh, take a look at it right here. See, he, he's got the corner and there he's right. He did have some pressure, but that was a terrific throw uh, right there. And of course, that was uh, Rodney Slap. You made the catch his first of the season. Six foot, 185 pound senior from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. You know anyone else from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania? Yeah, the, the Beaver Falls has had a, had a number of great ones. Well, they had one particular yeah. quarterback who was the most famous of them all. Guaranteed a victory in Super Bowl three. Broadway Joe Namath. Yes, sir. And the measurement will reveal that the Bison wow. was about a foot short. And with that field position, I think you got to punt the ball away. Yeah, and coach. Well, Coach Petty is uh, is the defense. This is very unusual. He's the defensive coordinator here at Howard. Greg Schiano, the head coach at Rutgers, is the defensive coordinator. That does not happen very often in college football anymore. But as a defensive coach, I'll guarantee you that ball is getting punted out of there. Not going to take a chance right here on your 30-yard line. Well, Petty, his first coaching job was as the secondary coach at North Carolina AT&T, then the secondary coach at Southern University. Then he came to Howard and was the defensive coordinator and eventually the assistant head coach. Then left for the same position at Norfolk State and then back to Howard for his first head coaching job. And he's now in his fifth year. 49 year old Rayford Petty, native of Tryon, North Carolina, played his college ball at Elon. Nuru into punt. He's averaged 31 yards on four punts. Willie Foster back deep to return, and this will be returnable from his own 30. Reverses his field, gets a nice open field block for Brandon Ringer. Look gets out. another open field block, and has still got the ball. And there comes the flag. Brought down at the 31 yard line. One of those blocks was thrown by Eric Foster, who was shaken up on the play. The second of the two open field blocks was thrown by Eric Foster, who is face down on the field back at the Howard 34 yard line. 39 yard punt, 40 yard return, but it will come back, at least some of it will. During the return, block in the back. On the receiving team, number 36. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Timeout. Penalty is on Courtney Green. So Rutgers with a 21 nothing lead converting a pair of turnovers into two short touchdown runs by Brian Leonard. Tonight Bob Picosi and Doug Graber back in Piscataway New Jersey glad you've joined us on this Saturday the first day of autumn Rutgers 21 Howard nothing 
Scarlet Knights on their way to a 4 0 start. If they get it, it will be their first since 1980. First and 10 Rutgers at its own 47. Mike Teal has thrown for one touchdown. Hands off to Leonard, who's run for the other two. Goes around the left side and picks up about five and a half. And again, Howard had seven in the box against that spread offense. And, uh, you know, that was an audible that ran away from the strength of it. But still, you're going to have to see. They're going to have to put the ball in Mike Teal's hands eventually against this defense. And that is, I think, the, the most important thing that has to happen for Rutgers in this game throughout the rest of this game. He's got to get his confidence. He's got to make some plays, throwing the football for him. He's one of five today. The one went for a touchdown on the draw. Leonard breaks a couple of tackles, and the second effort results in a first down at the Howard 41-yard line. Boy, Le Leonard has got great, great feet. He can really, uh, you know, he, he he's just got a great feel for it. He really can move his feet, and he gets in these uh, holes. Take a look at it. Watch him bounce this thing and find this. Look at the feet right there to bounce that outside. Find that gap. It, that was really not a, uh, that could have been easily a two-yard loss. Terrific job of making about seven on that play. Leonard, five carries for 21 yards. Two more yards than he had on four carries last week against Ohio. Here's Rice, second man through. Great burst of speed. Another first down to the 30. Pickup of 10 and a half. Boy, and I'll tell you, Leonard showed right there that he can block. That was a terrific, terrific collision with the linebacker on a straight isolation play. Take a look. Watch the fullback right here going to the right. Watch the block. Bam! That was <laughs> that was sub collision right there, and that allowed uh, Rice to make that positive. You can hear this one all the way up here. And there goes the helmet of the linebacker. Bam! That was a good collision by both players right there. The hit on Timothy Lockett. Yep, middle this season second team all MEAC selection. Leonard, 32 yards on six carries. Well, and he hurdles the man. We saw that maneuver last week. <laughs> that is the patented Leonard move. I mean, he's got a great vertical jump, and he does it. Time after time after time, you know, he's a big back and those defensive backs try to come low on him and he goes right over the top. Take a look at it right here. This is the patented letter move right there. He so, does it over and over. He's amazing. It's like Edwin Moses. You know, as a coach, you say, don't leave your feet. But you know what? <laughs> uh, you're going to tell him, son, just keep on doing that. Awesome. Awesome. He did it last week on a screen pass. 23 yard gain for number 23. He's got 55 yards and seven carries, and he gets it again. This time, nothing happening. Ricky Jackson, sophomore from Colorado Springs, making the stop as we hit the five minute mark with Rutgers leading it 21 to nothing. The Scarlet Knights have won six of their last eight home games. They were picked fourth in the Big East in the preseason coaches poll behind West Virginia, Louisville, and Pitt. The Scarlet Knights will open Big East play next Friday night in Tampa against USF. They will Boy, end the season at West Virginia. That game next week will be a bar barn burner. I promise you. USF's a good football team. Look at the strike. Rice, second Rice. effort touchdown. Ray Rice with his seventh touchdown of the year. He entered the day tied for first in the Big East and fourth in the country in scoring. He adds to the total and the Scarlet Knights with the conversion of the extra point can take a 28 nothing lead. There you see the two running backs and exactly how, how different they are. Leonard has got great feet. He can slide across that line of scrimmage and find the crack. He can certainly make you miss by going over you. Ray Rice has got, even though he's the smaller of the two, he, he is the strength and the power guy. And, and he can flat carry people with him. Rice second in the Big East, fourth in the country in rushing. Second only behind West Virginia's Steve Slate. Ito does convert the extra point. And Greg Schiano's meal ticket, Ray Rice, has made it a 28-0 lead. Take a look at it again. Excellent block by Harris right there, the tight end. And look at the strength of Ray Rice. He's fun to watch. This is a, a, just a straight uh, ISO play again. Leonard making the block right there. And there's the power of Raymond Rice. 
Rice entered the game with five consecutive 100 yard rushing performances. It's a Doug you mentioned one of the great running backs in Rutgers history J.J. Jennings. He holds the record for the most consecutive 100 yard rushing games. That is seven. J.J. is a season ticket holder as we look at the rushing totals. He lives in South Hadley Massachusetts right in the shadows of the University of Massachusetts. And he hops in his car and makes the drive down here to Piscataway to see all of the Scarlet Knights home games. He went out to see them play in Phoenix in the Insight Bowl last January, last December rather. And J.J. has been quoted as saying, oh, I won't bother me a bit if Ray Rice breaks my record. I'll be honored to have someone of his stature break it. And especially, you know, when you have a record like that, you really want a class act. Uh, to be the guy that breaks it and that is exactly what that young man is comes from a great family New Rochelle New York had committed to Syracuse in, in high school before his senior year they fired Pascaloni he changed his allegiance to Rutgers it's been a great game on kickoffs for Ito as he drives this one into the end zone for the third time today so Howard trailing 28 nothing with four and a half minutes to go now the Bison in their first two games played all three of their quarterbacks Blandon is by far the best running threat Martin December is the most seasoned passer of the three although when I say season take that with a grain of salt yep. because the three of them combined for a total of zero snaps at the quarterback position entering the season and indeed here's December with the team trailing 28 nothing in a quarterback yeah you called it and of course but this is the way they play that they are not afraid to change quarterbacks throughout the course of the game we may see three today Blandon six carries for 57 yards 11 pass attempts completed five for 42 yards handoff Rutherford pick up of one or two on the play as we approach the four minute mark December is a 6 1 190 pound sophomore from Miami last year was a return specialist injured his knee in the fourth game of the year didn't return incomplete pass intended for slappy December did not play in the spring as he was continuing to recover from the knee there's Blandon who is looking at this Howard possession from the sideline. I think it's good for a quarterback to, to, to take a series off. You know, you get a different perspective from the sideline. You can see exactly what's going on. Here comes a blitz against the option. Boy, they are so quick, they, like a bunch of sharks and piranhas. Man, they find the football. Devin McCourty, the nickelback, was all over that from his safety position. Uh, more good news for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, Courtney Green, number 36, their great safety, was back in the game. Uh, that series after he had gone out kind of holding a knee earlier and into punt this time will be their place kicker Dennis Weber. It will be his first punt of the year. Young man from Berlin Germany. Freshman. Nuru averaged 33 yards on five punts. And this one's a clunker. Goes out of bounds around midfield. And it's been a, it's been a game of field position and Rutgers has controlled it right from the very get go. Ryan Leonard acrobatic can do a little bit of everything. Yeah this is last week against Ohio and we saw that patented move and there it is again today and we've seen it in the past with him. <laughs> you know that that is a patented Brian Leonard move and he has been very effective with it. Leonard has scored two touchdowns Rutgers has not had to drive more than 53 yards for any of its four touchdowns. They've had a pair of 53 yard drives a 17 and a 12 teal pass caught by Harris. So it's the second completion of the day for teal both caught by Harris. The first one went for a touchdown. That yeah. was a 10 yard game and I love it and I and in my opinion that's exactly what they have to do here in the second quarter. They have to let teal throw the football. They've got to get him some throws and get him going. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough how important that is as they head into their Big East schedule. He, he's, it's really been a struggle for him the last two weeks. Last week, six of 13 for 83 yards, and he was intercepted three times. But Greg Schiano says the kid's mentally tough. There's no doubt in my mind he will bounce back. They set up the screen. Here's Leonard. He can't hurdle anyone on that one because <laughs> talk about getting low. Daniel Pierce was down around Leonard's ankles and. Uh, 
if he was intending to hurdle him, he never did get airborne. <laughs> you know what? And I kind of feel for Mike Teal. He's the son of a Port Authority <laughs> cop. And of course, you know, I was the son of a cop, so I know how he's been raised. Now we're going to get a whistle. I think we're going to get a false start. Scarlet Knights might not have been completely set before that quick snap. Prior to the snap, false start. On the offense, number 71, five yards from line of scrimmage. Second down. Penalty on Jeremy Zuda. I asked Greg Shiano this week, I said, what did you say to Teal after last week when he was intercepted three times? He said, well, I, I tried a light approach with him. I said, how about if we try throwing it to our guys this week? Because one thing the young man, the young man needs to smile a little more and be a little less serious about it. This time he throws left, right on the money to Tucker. And Tucker oh, is, does, oh. is knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Barely, barely stepped out of bounds. And, and this is good to see for Rutgers fans. And there's nobody happier than uh, Greg Schiano right there. It's great to see Teal here. He's stepping into his throws. He looks positive. He's made three real good throws on this drive and looks about 100% better. Well, Tucker is without question. Rutgers most dependable and experienced receiver. Did he get out of bounds? Yeah, I think he did. Great call. Well, it's close, but the heel, I think, might have just, just clicked down. So they not only would like to get Teal going, they'd like to get him, get him going with Tucker. This time the ball is caught by Campbell for the first down with 2.15 to go That's in the, the first half. Fourth positive throw in a row. Po fourth throw in a row that's been right on the money. Two-minute offense he's running here. Less time to think about it. And he's hit three different receivers on this possession. Blitz. Looks right. Campbell wow. again with the catch for the first down at the 15 with 2.06 to go. Tackle made by Thomas Claiborne. You know, in a yard game. Of all the things that have happened today, uh, this is the best for Rutgers fans because Look at that nice form. He really stepped through that throw real well, turned his hips and shoulders, put it right on the money, threw a bullet out there. With 2.01 to go, Teal looks left and he throws it away. He Not wanted, his fault. He wanted to go to Underwood. He wasn't open, so he made a very wise choice and just let yeah. it fall someplace safe, which was the end zone. They were trying to run an out and up right there, and he got bumped out of bounds. He threw the ball where the receiver should have been, but got bumped out of bounds, and of course not there. Good job by the Howard defense. Bringing up a second and 10. Last year, Teal as a freshman, appeared in nine games, started three of them, passed for 683 yards and a couple of touchdowns, but he was intercepted 10 times. Now we're going to get a whistle, and Greg Schiano wants to talk things over. Timeout, Rutgers, that is their first charge timeout. Second and 10 from the 15 for Rutgers. And this is what Teal has done on this possession. And keep in mind, prior to this possession, he had only been one of five. Uh, and really did not look good throwing the ball at all. I have to be honest and tell you that. It was very, very tentative. The throws were late. Comes out in the two-minute drive and puts everyone right on the money. And I think, you know, that's a sure sign to me, Bob, that he's just simply doing too much thinking. Two-minute drive, everything happens fast. And, and this he's practiced extremely well the last two weeks. So that shows you he, he's just probably putting a little bit too much pressure on himself in these game situations. He's playing afraid to make mistakes, and you can't play that way. you got to let it go. 157 to go in the half, and coming up at halftime, Doug and I will take a look around the Big East. We'll give you the latest scores from today's action all eight Big East teams in action today we will also take a look at the MIAC conference and have first half stats and highlights all coming up at halftime Mike Teal comes out of one of the storied high school football programs in New Jersey Don Bosco prep in Ramsey in his last two years in high school Don Bosco went 24 and 2 and won a pair of state championships Teal was a two time all state selection and in those two seasons, he passed for 4,050 yards and 49 touchdowns. Yeah, and that's, that's not forgetting now. He's 28 and 1 combined high school and college as a starter. Not bad. 5 and 1 as a starter here at Rutgers. Following the timeout, the handoff goes to Leonard. Right side, did he get out of bounds? Yes, he did. Stopping the clock with 151 to go at the six yard line, following a nine yard pickup. 
that's what you love about senior football players. He knew where he was on the field. He knew what the situation was. He got that ball out of bounds. Uh, that is absolutely perfect. Get, get everything you can out of it. Get it out of bounds. Leonard entered the day with 54 yards rushing on 15 carries. Already today, he has 68 yards on nine carries and a pair of touchdowns. Rice out of the game. Leonard the lone setback on third and one. Willie Foster in motion. Handoff. Leonard first down at about the four. There's plenty of time for Rutgers to do whatever they would like. In fact, Rutgers probably in a position where they'd like to milk the clock a little bit, giving Howard no time left. There's Absolutely. A look at Ray Rice getting a well-deserved respite. 13 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown. 43 yards away from a sixth consecutive 100-yard rushing performance. Nice job by the offensive staff of utilizing both of these outstanding running backs. Uh, you know, Leonard, they get the ball to him a lot of different ways. Uh, throwing the football. Rice, of course, is more of a pure runner, but he can catch it as well. Here's Leonard straight ahead penalty marker on the play. Yeah, and that it might have been thrown by the umpire. You know yeah, what that usually I means. I know exactly what that means. This one is coming back. There it is. So that may get Rice back into the game. Now 119 Hold now. On the offense, number 53. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. On Darnell Stapleton, the outstanding center for Greg Schiano's club, someone that Greg considers his best run block. So that will back it up to the 13-yard line where it will be first and goal with 119 to go. Rutgers with two timeouts remaining. The Scarlet Knights' fifth penalty of the day, totaling 45 yards. But no rights. Instead, one wide receiver to the left, two to the right. The tight end, Harris, and the lone setback is Lent. Teal to throw. Looks plenty of time across the middle, in and out of the hands of Campbell. <laughs> that was a classic case of running and looking before you got it. You know, as much as coaches talk about it and emphasize it, when those wide receivers come across the middle, uh, sometimes they have a tendency to peak just a little bit. He did right there. That throw was right on the money. So it will be second and goal from the 13 with 59 seconds left. Underwood and Tucker line up to the left and Campbell to the right in this three wide receiver set. Leonard. Straight ahead. Let's see if Rutgers uses its second time out here. And he stopped at the 11 yard line with 50 seconds to go. Bringing up a third and goal. Boy, it looks like they're going to let it wind down here. Scarlet Knights lead at 28 nothing. They are 3 and 0 for the first time since 90, 1981 and the 18th time in their history. A year ago, they finished seven and five, their first winning season since 1992. Game clock down to 20. Teal looks left now across the middle uh -oh. and it's intercepted uh -oh. in the end zone. He overthrew his man and was intercepted by Ricky Jackson. And that's going to cost the Scarlet Knights at least three points or, a, or at least a chance to make at least three. First Boy, turnover of the day for Rutgers. That is exactly what you did not want to happen to your young sophomore quarterback to make a mistake right there. And uh, you know what? He, he needs a friend right now on that sideline and somebody to put his arm around him. That is exactly what you didn't want to have happen. He's been he had a great drive. He made every throw on the money. That's tough. Take a look at it right here. He just forces it in here a little bit in a high throw, and that's usually the result with a high throw. Ricky Jackson, the safety, all over that one. First interception for Jackson this year, and only the second by the Howard team. Greg Ciano's reaction. And Howard will take a knee, and that will bring the first half to an end. So Rutgers only has 112 yards in offense in the first half. But has scored 28 points. Two Howard turnovers have created 17 yard and 12 yard touchdown drives for the Scarlet Knights, both ending with Brian Leonard touchdown runs. And they've also had a pair of 53 yard touchdown drives. Teal to Clark Harris for 45 yards and Ray Rice a three yard run. It's 28 0 Scarlet Knights at the half. 
Rutgers seeking its first 4-0 start since 1980 leads Howard 28-0 at halftime. Welcome back to Piscataway, New Jersey. Bob Picozzi along with former Rutgers football coach Doug Graber. Okay, Doug, is Greg Schiano a glass half empty or half full guy? Is he happy with the 28-0 lead or very disappointed because his team only has 112 yards in offense? I think he's very disappointed. And, and let's give Howard some credit. Howard has played extremely well. Uh, they're really a little bit unlucky that this score is 28 to nothing because they've played much, much better than that. Uh, if I'm Greg, I'm concerned about three injuries I've had in the first half to some of my key guys, uh, Harris, uh, Green, and, of course, uh, uh, Foster, the defensive lineman. I'm really concerned with my young quarterback. He got a great drive going there at the end of the game, at the end of the half here, excuse me, and then uh, inexplicably made another poor throw. And uh, this is something they have to get squared away fast. Now, all eight Big East teams are in action today. As we take a look at the standings entering the weekend, there's only been one league game played thus far this year, and in that one, Pittsburgh beat Cincinnati. But in overall records, Rutgers, along with Louisville, West Virginia, and USF have yet to lose. Yeah, four undefeated teams, and I'll tell you what, and I really think those four teams are the class of the conference. Of course, South Florida's got to play at, uh, at Kansas uh, this afternoon. But of course, you know, uh, Louisville, Pittsburgh has been off to a good start. And uh, West Virginia, I mean, they have been totally dominating uh, so far this year. Two teams in the top 10, the Big East has to be extreme, extremely thrilled with the start they've had this year. West Virginia fourth in the country, Louisville number eight. And next week, Rutgers will begin Big East play with a game at USF. Here's today's action. Cincinnati has lost the non-league game to Virginia Tech. Pittsburgh hammering the Citadel. And Louisville has defeated Kansas State, so the Cardinals remain undefeated despite the fact that their backfield has been decimated by injuries. UConn and Indiana are early in that one. And later on, it will be West Virginia at East Carolina, Miami at Syracuse, and USF will play tonight at Kansas. It is 28-0 Rutgers at halftime. Brian Leonard has run for two scores. Ray Rice has run for one, and Mike Teal has thrown a touchdown pass to Clark Harris against Howard of the MEAC. And when we come back, Doug and I will take a spin around the MEAC right after this timeout. It is halftime between Howard and Rutgers. Welcome back to Piscataway, New Jersey. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Doug Graber. Howard is one of nine schools in the MEAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And entering the day, Doug, Hampton is all alone in first place at 3-0, 2-0 in the league. Yeah, that's really not unusual. Hampton has really had an outstanding program going. They're really uh, almost always in the one double-A playoffs every year now. Terrific program at Hampton. And as we look at the schedule in the MEAC today, the big one is tonight, Doug. That will be at Giant Stadium. It's the 36th annual New York Urban League game, and it matches Hampton and Morgan State. Yeah, and I'll tell you, this classic has been just that. Hampton is 4-1 and one now in the last five games at the Meadowlands. And, of course, uh, this young guy right here, Alonzo Coleman, is one of the premier running backs in the country. The folks up in the Meadowlands tonight are really going to see one of the truly great backs in NCAA college football. He has 3,800 career yards, 53 touchdowns. He's had three 1,000-yard rushing years in a row. He is really something. He, he joins the 1AA guys in the past, like Jerry Azuma uh, in, uh, at New Hampshire, Adrian Peterson at Georgia Southern. Both those guys are with the Chicago Bears, in fact. And he is really a treat to watch. That's going to be quite a show up tonight in the Meadowlands, Bob. And Coleman has a chance to join Azuma and Peterson as the only players ever to rush for 1,000 yards four times in their career. He needs 160 yards to reach the 4,000-yard mark. It is halftime between Howard and Rutgers. In a moment, Doug and I will return with a look at first-half highlights. It's a 28-0 lead for Rutgers over Howard at halftime. Welcome back to Rutgers Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey. Bob Picozzi along with Doug Graber. And Doug, as we mentioned, Rutgers has struggled on offense today despite the 28-0 lead. But one thing the Scarlet Knights have really taken advantage of is Howard turnovers. Yeah, every time Howard has made a mistake, Rutgers has been right there to capitalize on it. That's why the score is 28 to nothing. Howard has played much better than that in the first half. Uh, you know, Rutgers has struggled in the 
the strong game in the first half. But again, remember, this team was built on running the football, playing great defense, special teams. And again, that's exactly what's happened here in this first half. And speaking of the running game, the dynamic duo of Leonard and Rice have been added again today. Both had big first halves. Huge first halves. And I got to say this now, the Rutgers staff does a good job of getting these kids the ball because they're different runners. This is a slasher, a power guy, even though he's the shorter of the two. And you see it right here. And man, he, he really brings it. He's got great strength. And here is the is kind of the, the jumper. You know, he, he kind of shifts his way around, sifts through there, finds a crack. Now he can lower the pads too and bring it in, but they're really two different style running backs, but the results are the same. Take a look at it here. 13 carries for Rice, 57 yards, 10 for Leonard, 62 yards. Outstanding first half by both of these uh, fine, fine running backs. And as we look at the halftime statistics, sort of belies what you see on the scoreboard because uh, Rutgers only with the 112 yards uh, in total on the, the rushing yards and then the 198 yards in total offense. The penalties have been a killer for both teams. But the key stat there is the turnovers and run, and those two power turnovers have resulted in 14 Rutgers points. Yeah, and, and, and you know the the, the punt turnover uh, where they where they you know bobbled the uh, the punt. That's a 70 yard turnover really. I mean that was a huge turnaround in this football game. It is 28 nothing Rutgers at halftime. The Scarlet Knights have only allowed seven points total in their two previous games. They shut out Illinois two weeks ago. That was their first shutout in four weeks, and they're halfway home to another shutout. They're also halfway home to their first 4-0 start since 1980. It's Rutgers 28, Howard nothing at halftime. Back with the second half kickoff after this. The Howard Bison Marching Band enjoying its visit to Central New Jersey for a date against the big boys. Only the third time that Howard has played a Division I A opponent in its history. Bob Picosi along with former Rutgers football coach Doug Graber in Piscataway, New Jersey. Awaiting the start of the second half kickoff, Rutgers leading Howard by a score of 28-0. And we saw Doug two quarterbacks see action in the first half for Howard, although Bland had played nearly the entire first half and he really was the entire Howard offense getting much of the offense such as it was on the ground. Uh, he was really extremely impressive in the first half here you see him running the option making two guys miss in the hole he's 5 8 you know, only 185 pounds but he is a tough guy and again the quarterback draw right here he shows amazing strength here's the option where the Rutgers blew an assignment that was on a key third and 12. Here's the pass going to his left, hard to do, puts it on the money. Uh, he has played extremely, extremely well for Coach Petty of Howard. Look at some of the home crowd here at Rutgers. Scarlet Knights have won six of their last eight games at home. And, and as I mentioned, Doug, that this is only the third time Howard has played a 1A opponent. And, and I asked Rayford Petty, their coach, how do you feel about playing a, a 1A opponent, particularly one of the caliber of Rutgers, a team that was listed 28th in the country in the latest AP rankings and he said you know one thing I'm concerned about is the health of our team coming out of the game they're going to be bigger stronger faster quicker and you don't want to get so banged up in this game that it's going to affect us for the rest of the season yeah and just the opposite has occurred Rutgers is the one who's uh, been banged up they've had three starters that have uh, have have taken some nicks here and take a look at the uh, schedule now uh, South Florida next Friday night and, I, and I've done South Florida games this year two of them. I've done two Rutgers games uh, that should be a tremendous football game folks. If you get a chance make sure to tune in on ESPN 2 next Friday night then at Navy who's who's very very tough under coach Johnson at Pittsburgh three road trips in a row Connecticut and then Louisville comes in here to the our house as they call it this beautiful stadium at Cincinnati and then Syracuse and at West Virginia December 2nd. Uh, that's the Big East. That's the schedule. You got to play it. And there's a look at Greg Shiano. Matt Grothy, the fine quarterback for USF, is the Big East Offensive Player of the Week, and he could pose some problems, but then again, he's going to be going against Doug Rutgers' defense, which leads the Big East in scoring defense and total defense second in rushing defense second in passing defense yeah and, and they really both teams play great great defense uh, it, but offensively they're two opposite teams 
Uh, for South Florida, they don't have really an established running back. They have two great backs that both are out. They have all walk-ons playing running back. But their quarterback, this young redshirt freshman Grothy, has come on huge for them. Of course, Rutgers, uh, Mike Teal has struggled, which has been well documented. You've seen it in the first half at times. Look at the numbers, 6 for 13. Which, uh, by the way, was exactly what he did last week against Ohio, 6 for 13. Isn't that amazing? The exact same numbers. But look tentative at times. Then It was very inconsistent throughout the first. At times, looked very, very good. So I, I still say the same thing. Really, the key for Rutgers today they have to get Teal going in the second half, get some confidence going after just throwing that last interception. Uh, that's going to be tough to do. He's a tough kid. He's practiced extremely well. There's no question. Right. I talked to Coach Ciano. He's just pressing right now, and that really shows on the field. Well, let me ask you this, Doug, as, as a former coach, how about do you concern yourself with this? You're up 28 nothing. At some point when you're up by a big margin as the game gets later and later in the second half you normally pull in the reins right play your second stringers keep the ball on the ground and and I'm sure Greg Shiano doesn't want to do anything to embarrass Howard or any opponent but on the other hand that'd be counterproductive to trying to get Teal going because as you said right from the very beginning mission number one today is you want to get a win you want to get a win every time you, you, you lace on the, the pads but number two you want to get your quarterback going. Well, I, how, how much do you see them throwing the ball in the second half when they're up 28 nothing? I don't know what they're going to do. I, I know that I would want my quarterback to throw the ball here early in the third quarter, not to try to embarrass anybody. That, that not at all. But they've got to get him going. We've talked about that. And you know the other thing you have to do. You've got a young quarterback by the name of Jabu Lovelace, who is a redshirt freshman, has not played, has talent, and you've got to get him in this game and you've got to take a look at you have to get him some experience. I'm talking about Lovelace now the red shirt freshman. So uh, I'm sure that those two uh, things are going to be key in the second half and I guarantee you Greg Ciano talked to his offensive staff uh, just about that at halftime. It will be Rutgers ball to begin the second half and it has been a uh, somewhat trying week for Greg Ciano. He hasn't been able to completely enjoy the three and zero start largely because the terrible start for the Miami Hurricanes who yep. really embarrassed last week by Louisville has really resulted in the rumor mill that <laughs> Larry Coker's uh, job security uh, may be a big question mark in Miami and the name that everyone's mentioning in connection with that potential vacancy is Greg Shiano because Greg was the defensive coordinator at Miami before he got his first head coaching job at Rutgers and obviously as a coach of a team that's three and oh you don't want to talk about things like that No, you're never going to talk about that you can't <laughs> stop everybody else but let's face it he's a hot property he's a young man he's 40 years old he's done a spectacular job with this program his name is going to come up not only at Miami but for a lot of other jobs of course he just signed a seven year contract extension Rutgers wants to keep him pooch kick by Mendoza and a very smart decision to call for a fair catch by Kevin Malice normally one of the uh, players who plays up like Malice might not necessarily be used to handling the football it's never a bad idea to call for a fair catch which means the other guys can't hit you I think a lot of football players don't even know about that rule that you are allowed to call for a fair catch on a kickoff return. absolutely and that is a sign of a well coached uh, unit and well coached special teams uh, special teams coach Darren Rizzi Coach Ciano is very involved with the special teams. Uh, these guys are prepared when they come into a game. That's why Ciano is such a hot ticket right now and a, and a name that's going to come Time up out. for a lot of jobs. Howard. And that's Howard, first Howard very disorganized, forced to use a timeout on uh, defense. Yeah, had 10 guys on the field. I mean, that, wow. <laughs> that uh, Coach Petty is not going to be happy with that right there. Not the uh, way you want to begin the second half. No, and, and, you know, and his. <laughs> And his defense has played extremely well. I mean, they've been put in some very, very tough predicaments by the turnovers. But really, his defense has played well. They've, they've, the coverage has been good. Uh, you know, Teal, when he's made throws, they've had to have been perfect because they've been in pretty good position. And they've hung in there pretty good against the uh, bonded rushing attack of Rutgers as well. Howard off to an 0-2 start. Opened the season with a loss at Hampton, then lost at home to Florida A&M last week. Next week, the Bison will play a non-league game at home against Fort Valley State. Then it's right back into the MEAC at Winston-Salem at home against Morgan State. 
And in fact, the rest of the way after next week, it will be all MEAC opponents. The MEAC, by the way, has sent 10 players to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, including a member of the 2006 class, Harry Carson, South Carolina State, former great Giants linebacker and captain. Here's Rice on first down, right side, and he'll pick up the first down. But it may come back. There's a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage on the far side. And that's the first time today they've run the toss to that what we call bunch formation. You get a tight end and two wideouts in there bunched, uh, bunched together. And uh, they had a nice crack, but this one. Offside. Number 92 on the defense. That penalty's declined. It's all the play. First down. Marvin Wooten, the left defensive end, senior from Reston, Virginia, jumped offside. Yeah, take a look at the patience here by Ray Rice. Now he sees the crack. Boom. There's the burst and there's the speed. Strong. Look at the legs. Look at the legs on that guy. Boy, he, he is, uh, he's got some pins. Seventh penalty for 50 yards. 12-yard gain by Rice. And they call his number again. He cuts back, loses his footing, but not before he picks up four Rice more ball out to midfield. And of course, remember now, folks, he's got this a streak of 100 yard rushing games. And I'm sure, I don't know if Coach Ciano is too concerned with that, but uh, that would be, he's got 72 yards right Second now. Would be great to see if he could get his sixth consecutive 100 yard gain. And of course, J.J. Jennings, the record holder, is here, and he had seven. J.J. had seven back in 1973 when he ran for 1,353 yards and 21 touchdowns. Teal to throw has all day to do so has Tucker for the first down and Tucker is driven out of bounds at the 30 yard line by Robert Dowdy. Excellent decision making by Teal right there. It was a two oh boy and that's an ankle. That's not that doesn't look good but a great decision right there by Teal. They hit it was a two man route. They had a guy going right down the seam of the field. Take a look at it right here. He's got a guy going down the seam on the play action. He's covered, goes to his check down, the crossing route right there, put it right on the money. That's one of the best throws he's made today. 21-yard pickup. Mm, right ankle. Boy, and you don't want to lose him. He, uh, Sean Tucker, young guy out of Parkland, Florida, 6'2", 200-pound senior, good, good, good football player. Two years ago, he missed nine games with a groin injury. Two catches today for 31 yards. And the, the one thing, uh, largely because of Teal struggles, the Rutgers wide receivers haven't played a big role in the 3 0 start as we see if we can find out what happened to Tucker on this play. Well, I, you know what? I couldn't honestly. Wasn't any contact. I couldn't honestly it. see what happened, you know. And, the, and of course, uh, you know, remember now, this is a short week now. Uh, for Rutgers because it's, they're playing a Friday night game and they have to travel. So you really miss two days of preparation. Uh, it, that This is tough to get these injuries like that, that, you know, that need time. Two tight ends, high formation, right. Right up the gut to the 25. Pick up a five. I started to mention the wide receivers haven't played a big role right. in Rutgers 3-0 and start. And Greg Shiano says, I think one of the reasons is the number of snaps we've had There's in the first three games this year is way down from a year ago. Yep. And one of the reasons for that are the new rules in college football. The clock starts on a kickoff when the kicker kicks the ball instead of when the receiver returns it. The clock starts on the ready to play signal change following of the change of possession. Exactly. That shortened the amount of snaps in a game. Pitch to right, left side. Cuts back, first down at the 17 yard line Dowdy with the stop again. You know and these wide receivers for Rutgers and looking at tape last weekend this week these wide receivers block now look at here on the punch this is what we're talking about look at the block right there by Harris outstanding block by uh, Dennis Campbell number five nice job and, and these wide receivers block all the time. And that's one of the reasons why these running backs have put up such big numbers. That offensive line will get after it. And these wide, it's a mentality that you establish as a head coach. 85 yards and 17 carries for Rice. Teal rolls right, throws, has Leonard. And with that, Leonard extends his streak. He has now caught at least one pass in 38 consecutive games. He is second in Rutgers history in pass receptions. That is his 183rd. 
I like the call. I really like the call. You know, Teal, 6'4", 220, and he was able to, uh, to you know, get him on the run a little bit, get him moving, but 6'4", 220, now, you know, he can move, and a nice throw on the run. Second and four for the Scarlet Knights. An, an impressive opening drive to begin the second half. This time, Teal out of the shotgun. Handoff, Rice. Left side. Keeps wow. going forward. Keeps <laughs> moving those feet. And we'll get a penalty marker. That could be a face mask. Yeah, I think it is. But half the distance here is going to be about four inches. But they're <laughs> going to get a, they're going to get a little bit of extra yardage. His power is amazing. 5'9", 185. But man, is he strong. Yep, face mask. That'll be one of the shortest. Face mask. On the defense, number five. Half the distance to the goal. Ten-yard pickup by Rice. He's got 95 yards already today. He's a slasher. Great cut right there. Now watch. Look at this right. There's the face mask right there. Look at the power. Oh, he is strong. Woo. Another look at it here. Here's the slashing move right up the field. And right here, you're going to see the safety come in, and there's a, that's a great call. That should have been a 15-yarder, but they only had half. Okay, there's the touchdown. <laughs> Rice's second touchdown of the day. He now has 96 yards. And Rutgers with the extra point will lead 35 nothing. Eighth touchdown of the year for the sophomore from New Rochelle, who was named the Big East Offensive Player of the Week after Week One, and was named to the Big East Weekly Honor Roll after his second and third games of the year. So four of. Rutgers five touchdowns have been on the ground today two by Leonard and now two by Rice. Jeremy Ito in to kick the extra point. Clark Harris snaps Anthony Cali holds. And Ito is now 14 of 15 on extra point attempts today. Ray Rice is six yards away from his sixth straight 100 yard rushing performance. All right, Doug Graber, I have a question for you. How many of those folks in that section right there do you suppose <laughs> will be paying attention tomorrow when the new Associated Press Top 25 poll comes out? I guarantee you, they, <laughs> they, they're into that now. They will be, they look at those two running backs right there side by side. And uh, you know what? Unselfish football players, both of them come from great families. And they don't really care. I guarantee you, Ray Rice doesn't, he could care less whether he gets 100 yards today, but I hope they're keeping track of it on the sideline uh, so that they can give him that opportunity. It's been a great day for Ito on kickoff. This time it's Sherman on his first return, and he is thrilled at the 11 yard line. Wow, that was, hang on a second here. That was Blair Bynes, the linebacker, and man, did he lay the leather on that one. Wow. Sure. This, this special team. freshman from Winston-Salem is yep. shaking up. He took a real shot right there, buddy. As far as the rankings are concerned, teams to look for that may leave the top 25. Penn State's number 24. Very tough game today at top-ranked Ohio State. Stranger things have happened, but you have to like the Buckeyes' chances in that one. Pass up the sideline for Hood, who almost made a circus catch. He really did, and I'll tell you, uh, Blandon made a terrific, terrific throw right there. And the only reason that was not complete is the receiver got bumped and really just kind of knocked off the timing a little bit. Blandon has been impressive today, really impressive. He is now five of 13, 42 yards. Also six carries for 57 yards. Well, he's been the guy for them, and remember, this, this defense for Rutgers is uh, phenomenal. There's the snap. There's the option. And Blandon very wisely did not give up the football because in his kitchen were Eric Foster and Jamal Westerman. Now we mentioned Penn State ranked 24th playing Ohio State. Number 21 California and number 22 Arizona State yep. are playing each other today. Yep. That game's at Cal, so one of them will lose. So well, who how, knows? How exciting this would be for all these Rutgers alumni around the country to see their university finally in the top 25 after an absence of 30-something uh, years. 30 years exactly. 1976 is the last time it happened. 
Landon, here Look comes out. the rush. Look out. Did a great job of getting away from the rush. That was like a jump ball. And it's still loose. That may have been, somebody may have, Rutgers did intercept the football. It never hit the ground. Wow. Whoa, that was something. That ball bounced up in the air about three times. We're going to have to let the replay uh, tell us who intercepted that one, because that was in some serious traffic. And, of course, right in front of the Howard bench, and we couldn't tell uh, what was going on right there. But let's take a look at it. Here's the jump ball. I think Gerald made. No, it's still loose. Wow. Who's that last guy that dove in there? It's like Devin McCourty is on his back. Well, Rutgers is going to run a play before the replay official could get hold of that one. And they get it off. Excellent coaching by Greg Schiano and the staff. Uh, there was a chance that could have been replayed. They got the offense out there in a hurry and got that ball off. Now the officials, uh, wait a minute, no. A lot of discussion going on here. Third turnover of the day for Howard. Rutgers has turned the first two into 17 12 yard touchdown drives. Well, there's a timeout on the field. That means an official timeout. Yeah, and now they're going to talk with the coach Ciano on the sideline. And I, uh, but you know, <laughs> you can see some of the players kind of smiling on the sideline because they clearly were trying to get that thing off. And that was Courtney Green that came down with that football. Well, we saw Courtney Green with an acrobatic interception last week in the end zone to our left, where he went up in the air, deflected the ball, and then caught it when he was practically flat on his back in the end zone. And so for Green. It would be his second interception of the year if the uh, ruling stands and they are going to talk it over on the far side. And it was an interesting week for, for Greg Schiano, not just because of the rumors about possibly uh, University of Miami having some interest in him. Let's take one more look at this. Yeah. Green's 36. That's a jump ball, no question about that. I, I know that it didn't hit the ground the first time. Came right off his knee. Now right you're going to see the a player at the knee. end. Dive into the fray. Yeah, and, and they're still uh, loose. And there, uh, you know, you just there can't. Is no review. Review. It's still loose. See, it's up Play in the air. Off. It's up in and the air. We have second down. And there's Green. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, a, a great job of getting the offense on the field. I, I don't think that uh, after a play has been run. I mean, I, I'm not. I don't think the Big East replay allows that. <laughs> play's been run. That you well, got to The NFL move on. doesn't either, but it no. didn't stop them from doing it in yeah. the Giants Eagles game last week. <laughs> no, you're, yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> They ran a play and then they went back and looked on the replay at the play that preceded the one. Yeah. Second and nine for the Scarlet Knights. Teal looks, throws, has his man, wow. Leonard. There has been some serious collisions in this game, and that was certainly one right there between uh, uh, Pope and Leonard. 20 yard pickup. The same play they scored on. It was an out and up, and, and except Leonard, you know, he's kind of a half tight end, too. Good collision right there. I'm sorry, that was Claiborne for Howard, number 22. First and goal, Rutgers, the ball just inside the 10. High formation behind Teal, two tight end set. Rice mm. picked up perhaps one, so that would. Leave Rice five yards short of the century mark. Terrific play by Robert Dowdy, a senior linebacker. Man, he shot the shot the gap right there, and he, he put the wood on Rice. Watch it right here. Look at that collision right there. Wow. Tell you, I give Howard a tremendous amount of. Boy, that's a heck of a collision. I give Howard a lot of credit defensively. Boy, they have played extremely hard in this football game. Now it's. The one tight end set, and that tight end, Harris, is in motion. Here's Rice again, still going forward, still going forward. And I think that may put him over 100 yards for the sixth week in a row. That, that, that should be enough. exactly right, Bob. That should be it. Wait, look spotted at the, at the oh, two. Oh, they spotted all the way back at the two. I thought he was. Yeah, uh, but I think that, that should mean that he got seven on the last two carries. Yeah. I'll guarantee you that the uh, the bench is uh, hopefully uh, keeping track of that.
22 rushes, 101 yards to so the sixth straight week. Now, that's to be, you have to be careful. It only matters if you still have 100 at the end of the game. That's right. You get negative yardage. Here's a chance that right here. And oh. that's another yard. Well, that's, that's positive yardage. That's two more. That should be it. <laughs> Ray Rice with his third touchdown of the day. He has scored Rutgers last three touchdowns. And it's turning into a very one-sided affair here in Piscataway. Three turnovers for Howard, and they have all created incredibly short fields for Rutgers. And the Scarlet Knights have capitalized and scored a touchdown each time. And I, tell you, I really like uh, Jeremy Ito, this kicker. Watch how quickly he gets the ball up right here. This is a great shot of it. Boom, that ball gets up in a hurry. Very, very difficult to block any of his kicks. Well, he made 66 extra points in a row before he missed one two weeks ago against Illinois. There's your favorite horse again, oh, partner. There's my favorite horse. <laughs> horse hasn't been uh, whistled for any penalties today like he no, did one time. The horse is having a good day. It's 42 nothing Rutgers over Howard and in terms of time management following that interception Rutgers thought that they might be a re replay so the idea is to snap the ball before they can replay it and check out how quickly the Rutgers team gets the offense on the field and they not only got on the field but they snapped the ball in a hurry and Ito with yet another kickoff that goes through the end zone. That's a sign of really, really a well-coached football team. Take a look at it right here. This now, is the real defense time. is going off the field. This is in real time exactly. Watch how quick that offense gets out there. No huddle, no nothing. That offense is on the field, and they run a play before the officials have any chance to even talk about a replay on that uh, interception. It was a little bit controversial. Look at this. They're lined up. They're ready to go, and they run it. Terrific job of coaching right there. They wound up reviewing it anyway, yep. but the ruling stood. And it was an interception for Green. Rutgers converted it into a 30-yard touchdown drive. On first down, first carry of the day for Carlos Whitaker. 5'11", 195-pound sophomore from North Chicago, Illinois. A transfer from the Naval Academy. That was his fourth carry of the season. Yeah, and we've got, 12 yards. got December to now uh, back in at uh, quarterback for Howard. We saw December very late first half. He had one carry for minus two yards. He has another carry, and that might be uh, <laughs> minus one and a half. December did not throw a pass. He's on the field for only a couple of snaps. Rankard with the stop. Rankard scored a touchdown a week ago. His teammate, Quintero Frierson, sacked the Ohio quarterback, Austin Everson, in the end zone. The final seconds of the first half, and Rankard fell on it for a touchdown. Third and 12. Let's look right here by Rutgers here. They come look on the screen. That. that was very, very dangerous. <laughs> oh, Jamal over. Westerman was all over that one. The only thing he didn't do was look at the ball. Had he done so, he might have had a touchdown. He definitely would have had a touchdown. And, you know, in both these defensive ends, again, take a look at Westerman right here. Reads it perfectly. Wow, see that 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 is a, a technique that that defensive end any when they're in a blitz any back that flares he's got to take him and he did it extremely well. Westerman has been outstanding this year second in the Big East in sacks ninth in tackles for loss. He uh, patiently waited for a chance to play and with the graduation of outstanding defensive ends Ryan Neal and Val Barnaby. They're coming He's after this chance. one. Here, Here they come. Rutgers. Nice protection by Howard. Willie Foster with a fair catch at the Howard 42-yard line, following the punt by Sabri Nuru. The three Howard turnovers have resulted in very short fields for Rutgers, and the Scarlet Knights have converted them into 21 points. Yeah, they, they, and they did it fast, and, and that's really the story of this game because Howard has played much better than the score would indicate. Tough day for Coach Petty right there. Tough day. 24-yard punt by Nuru. And a new quarterback for the Scarlet Knights, Jabu Lovelace. He played in one game, three carries for 13 yards, has yet to throw the football. 
Redshirt freshman from Tenafly, New Jersey. Handoff Cordell Young. And look at Young break a couple of tackles. <laughs> Young, a freshman from Westville, New Jersey. And we may have seen the last of Ray Rice today. If we did, the totals 23 carries, 105 yards, a sixth straight 100 yard rushing performance. That's the second longest such streak in Rutgers history. And it's the second longest active streak in the country. And a lot of backups in the game right now for Rutgers, and, and I think it's a great call getting Rice out of the game. I think it's a great call getting Lovelace in the game at quarterback. They've got to get him some snaps. 18-yard pickup for Young. He's going to get the ball again, and this time, terrific penetration from the far side, provided by Marvin Wooten, senior from Reston, Virginia. Not far from the Howard University campus in Washington, D.C. Jabu Lovelace, 6'2", 200-pound freshman, Tenafly, New Jersey. Outstanding uh, academic student, way over 1,200 in the SAT. Now, when I watched practice the other day, they ran a lot of option with him. He can really run. I, I, I really, really would expect to see some option here. Second down and 13. Handoff, Young again. Spins away from yeah. the tackle attempt by Lockett and moves forward for some positive yardage. Another face mask on Howard. No question about that. Saw his head snap back. You know, and I had lunch uh, Friday with athletic director uh, Bob Mulcahy, an old friend. He told me, he said, there's the call. Fate. Yep. He told me, wait till you see Cordell Young. And this is our first real look at him. Number eight right Personal here. Foul. Face mask. Oh, no question about that. At the distance to the goal, first down. There's a look at Young, who at West Deptford High School. Check out these numbers, Doug. In his high school career, all he did was rush for 4,597 yards wow. and 63 touchdowns. Now, they don't play 16 game schedules at West Stepford High School like they do in the no. NFL. You know, and he's a true freshman. Uh, Rutgers is playing 10 true freshmen. Lovelace out of the shotgun again. High snap on the keeper. Left side. Nice tackle made by Dowdy, who's had a big game from his linebacker spot. You know, again, talking to the offensive staff about uh, Jabu Lovelace, uh, got a lot of talent. That, you know, he's just not quite game ready yet. You know, he, he might... Uh, on the fourth down, spiked the ball. I mean, you know, he just has not played in games, and that's the only way you're going to get that kind of experience. You know, game game management, you know, watching the play clock, getting the plays off, running the football team, getting in, in and out of the huddle. Key thing for a young quarterback to learn, and this is the only way to do it. Second and 13, Kevin Brock in at tight end. He's in motion. Hand off to Jack Corcoran. Straight up the middle, runs into the umpire. <laughs> and neither the umpire nor anybody on Howard could tackle him until he got inside the one yard line. He ran right over umpire Bruce Palmer and a couple of guys wearing the white colored uniforms. <laughs> Another true freshman, Hamilton, New Jersey. That's down in South Jersey. Rutgers had a lot of good players from there. Uh, Andy Beckett was a fine defensive lineman here from Hamilton. First carry of Corcoran's career, and it was a good one. 17th first down for the Scarlet Knights. First and goal from the one. Handoff Young. We'll get a penalty marker on the play. There's the umpire wasn't knocked down this time. And as a result, he had a good look at what presumably was a hole. I think the umpire kind of got mad at him about that, that <laughs> collision he took. You, you could not pay me enough money. Holding on the offense, number 70, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. First down. Mike Gilmartin, a sophomore from Estero, Florida, whistled for the hole. So this will push it back. Jabu Lovelace was an all-state, all-league, and all-county pick at Tenafly High School. Howard. He was that the group two charge. player of the year during his days at Tenafly High School. He's ranked as the number 28 player in New Jersey by Scout.com, getting his first opportunity to run the offense in a 42-0 game. This season, catch all of the premier regional college football matchups only from ESPN+. Plus. Check the local listings for each Saturday's game and time in your area. 
it's been all Rutgers. Howard has 101 yards in total offense, and the combination of Ray Rice and Brian Leonard has rushed today for 167 yards. Pretty good day, but this is how this is how Rutgers wins. They're going to run the football. Five touchdowns out of those two young guys, and two of the most unselfish players on this football team. That's the neat thing about it. Two outstanding young people. So following the timeout, it will be first and goal from the 11 for Rutgers following the holding penalty on Mike Gilmartin. Shabu Lovelace, the quarterback. The running backs are Cordell Young and Dimitri Linton. Kenny Britt is in the game for the first time. Wide out. Handoff. Young. Keeps going. Wow. Oh, breaks a couple of more tackles. He didn't run down the umpire that time, but he <laughs> ran down a couple of bison. Carried Timothy Lockett with him. That was, uh, I think that was Corcoran. And man, I'll tell you what, he, he, he brings the load with him. He is a pretty impressive 230-pound freshman running back. And of course, <laughs> Brian Leonard's getting the kick, of, kick out of that. So Corcoran with a nine-yard pickup. He's got two carries for 22 yards in his career. This time it's Young. And he is stopped just short of the goal line. It will be third. And looks to be about a foot and a half. Inside the three-minute mark. You know, Bob, we didn't get a chance to finish that story about this stadium has teeth in it. When, when the guys were pouring the concrete for the stadium, they came running to me. They said, Coach, Bob lost his teeth. They were pouring the not concrete. Me, not Bob. you, another Bob. Lost his teeth. Both, both a set of false teeth. So this stadium has got teeth in it. And we're oh, going boy. to get another hole. Yep, and the umpire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> young, young doesn't know. Young thinks he has scored his first college <laughs> touchdown. Holding on the offense, number 64. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Third down. Dan Mazin, yeah. transfer from Penn State. <laughs> junior from Carteret, New Jersey. So this Rutgers second unit on offense is getting a, a lot of battle under fire on the red zone offense. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's important. And of course, they're learning some uh, lessons that uh, you can't tackle people now when you uh, when the umpire is right there. And I also said earlier, you know, the umpire, I'll tell you, well, what a tough job. I mean, you've got big, huge bodies flying at you from every angle. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't want to do it, to be honest with you. This could be the first pass of Lovelace's career. There it is, and it's a completion. It's caught by Tim Brown for his first career catch. Brown, yet another true freshman. He's from Miami. And now this is always a dilemma for a coach. Yeah, You're up 42 is. now, I think. Yeah. You never want to rub it into opponent. Is it more demeaning to go for it on fourth down or to kick the field goal? You know, I, I you don't want to take a knee. That's demeaning. No, that's that's the worst you can do. I think that you got to play the game. You know, you certainly want to keep the score down, but yet, you know, uh, you got your twos out here, and, right. they, and they got to play too and get experience. Can't ask them not to not to try to score. Here's the handoff for Young, and the third time to charge. We don't have a single flag from the umpire. I don't see one yet. Uh, he'll remember that the rest of his life. <laughs> I guarantee you. His first two uh, touchdowns were called back, and he finally got the third one in. Cordell Young, the freshman from Westville, New Jersey. He did have 10 carries for 48 yards in the first three games. He actually gave a verbal commitment to Virginia before changing his mind and deciding to play for the state university in his native state. Ito in to attempt his seventh extra point of the day. And he's got it. So the first career touchdown for Cordell Young has given the Scarlet Knights a 49 nothing lead. You know, I, I learned something early in my coaching career. Those commitments, uh, a lot of times that are given, those are just guidelines. Uh, take a look at the touchdown here. Mason, a nice job on the pull. Oh, ooh, that might have been another hold right there. They didn't catch that when Cordell was lucky. This is only the third time Rutgers has played a one double A or the third time they played a MIAC opponent. 
both times previously was Morgan State and they won them both. And uh, I, I asked Greg Shiano this week I said when you're playing a, a one double A opponent are you a little concerned that your kids might not take the opponent as seriously and there have been five one double A opponents already this season We're only it's not even it's mid September and they've already had five wins over one A teams and yep. he said look I played one double A football because Greg played at Bucknell. Yep. I know the way one double A kids think and act. It's their chance to shine. I guarantee you we will get their best effort meaning the opposition. So if you don't prepare properly you set yourself up for defeat and of course what's the first thing we said at the very beginning of the telecast today two years ago New Hampshire. That's right. A one double A team and a very good one by the way they're ranked number one in the country this year they came in here. And beat Rutgers. You know, and they had beaten Michigan State the week before Rutgers that game. Had, yep. So they're feeling pretty good about themselves and whack. There you see Mike Teal on the sideline. There's Coach Ciano, the architect of this uh, fantastic program. He certainly is going to be a, a topic of conversation around the country. Uh, you know, talking to Bob Mulcahy, he's got the seven year extension. He, they're building a house. Greg Schiano and his wife are building a house right on campus because he wants to spend more time. He's got four young children. He wants to spend as much time with those uh, young people as he can. And uh, I think that's the university making a commitment to him. He certainly made a commitment to this university. Well, Rutgers has been pretty impressive coming out of the locker room at halftime this year, I'd say. How about that? That includes today. Yep. They didn't allow any points two weeks ago to Illinois. They didn't allow any second half points last week to Ohio, although Rutgers didn't score any second half points last week either. This is Greg Ciano's first head coaching job, but he has a terrific coaching pedigree. Quick toss, right side, Terry Perry. And he is run down from behind by Joe Jacoby. But uh, Greg Ciano. As we said was the defensive coordinator at Miami. Before that he was. Five years with the three years rather with the Chicago Bears and before that. Six years under Joe Paterno at Penn State. Before that a graduate assistant uh, for me when I came right. to Rutgers here. All going all back December. And he's brought down by Malice. Kevin Malice. Sophomore from. Manchester New Jersey. Who has had a quite a challenge in his career here at Rutgers because a year ago, last October 24th, his brother Brian, who's a state trooper, was involved in a very, very serious automobile accident. He managed to survive the accident, but thus far has been unable to regain his ability to walk. Kevin spent a lot of time and continues to do so, obviously, visiting his brother. It happened right in the middle of the season, and it's given him and Kevin's teammates great strength to see the way that family has rebounded. From that tragedy. Pass incomplete and nearly intercepted by Damaso Munoz. Yeah, this is the entire second defense on the field now for the uh, Scarlet Knights. Some of these young men getting a good experience here, and Damaso really had <laughs> sure had a chance. I'll tell you what, he'll take a little razzing on that one now because you can't uh, get it any much uh, better than that. Sugar coated right there. So Howard will punt yet again. Punt safe, not going after this at all. Willie Foster back at his own 45 yard line. Final he's, minute of the third quarter. Willie Foster's done a great job today. He's gotten to all these punts. He's made the fair catches. He's made, a, there is another one. Excellent decision. You don't see the ball rolling down the field with Foster in there. Outstanding, the outstanding uh, return guy. Catches that one at the 44 yard line. On Tuesday Greg Schiano did not exactly uh, get thrilled at the way his kids were practicing and in <laughs> fact he, he suggested that they might want to leave practice early. He threw the whole team off the practice field. Yeah you know and I kind of winked at him this week when we talked about that I, I did the same thing uh, uh, quite a few times and, and you know what but when you're not practicing well you, you're taking the chance of guys getting hurt and that's just when you're having a bad day you're better off getting the message across. We need to come out here tomorrow. The practice a heck of a lot better than this. Lovelace looks the throw, nothing open, so he'll take off of the ball. And he'll be driven out of bounds at the 45 yard line after a pickup of one tackle made by Lovelace, Daniel Pierce. Carrier. You know, I think when you play a game like this, I mean, again, we've talked about Fire this is one of these games where you 
should win the football game. I think the key word for that whole week of practice has to be improvement. This is an opportunity for us to get better. We have to get better. And I think you talk about that throughout the season. The teams that continue to improve every week are the ones that, that really, in the end, are great football teams. Second and nine, Lovelace out of the shotgun. High snap, handoff Young, and a Whoa. terrific hit by Rudy Hardy, senior from Hartford, Connecticut. Loss on the play of about five. That probably was the final play of the third quarter. Yep, should be. Boy, what a what a gorgeous sight this stadium is, and the uh, you know this is the Garden State and the green and and of course uh, beautiful looking turf. Although I'll tell you what, it's not real. I think <laughs> we got to say it. But look at the views around here. What a setting this is for college football. I'll tell you what, the team that plays here is not your garden variety team thus far in 2006. The Scarlet Knights, 3-0, and and they lead Howard 49-0 as we head into the final quarter. Bob Picozzi and Doug Graber back in Piscataway, New Jersey, the Howard University marching band and enjoying their visit to play a 1A opponent. Rutgers leading Howard 49-0 as we begin the fourth quarter. Jabu Lovelace to throw, and he's sacked on the blitz from the far side. Great hit by Arondo Jamison. That's his second sack of the day. And I'll tell you, Lovelace did a fine job of just hanging on to the ball, because take a look at this now. He doesn't see this coming. This is from a corner blitz blind side. And uh, he, he did have, he did uh, keep control of the football, but whack. Uh, welcome to college football. <laughs> Radigan into punt. Back to, uh, deep to return is Leonard Moore. Radigan hasn't had to punt much today, but he's been terrific when he has. He's averaged 55 yards of punt with three kicks. Moore with the catch at the 18. Makes one man miss, makes another miss. And a nice open field tackle by Gene Belger at about the 29 yard line. There it will be Howard Ball following a 51 yard punt. Radigan, Rutgers has a terrific punter in Radigan, a terrific place kicker in Edo, just great special teams, period. The official attendance today 35,558. Seating capacity is 41,000, and the Scarlet Knights had the full 41,000 in the previous two games. Rutgers goes on the road for the next three weeks. This was their third straight home game. Now the third string quarterback, Floyd Hagler, with his first snap of the day. And he hands off to Martin Corneef. And for Corneef, that was his first carry of the day. There's Hagler, 6'2", 195-pound sophomore from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Look at the total yards here by half. Powers is yet to get on the plus side. Wow. Second half. Last week, Rutgers held Ohio University to minus six yards rushing. Takes the handoff, throws, overthrows the intended receiver across the middle, the tight end, Charlie Richards. You know, in, in talking to Coach Petty this week uh, about his Howard team, uh, he, he really, the, the one thing he really wanted to get done in this game is to come out of this game as a better football team. And I, I think he has. I really do. Uh, they, they have played uh, some outstanding defense. They've looked good on offense at times. Uh, remember now, this is a terrific, terrific Rutgers team. This is a top 25 caliber team, no question. Hagler avoids the rush, rolls right, throws on the run, has his man. Right on the money, right on the sideline. Larry Duncan with the catch. Nice ad lib by Hagler. 20 yard pickup. Take a look at the young sophomore here from Orangeburg, South Carolina, on the run. Waits to the last second, puts it right over the corner and uh, cover two and puts it right on the money. Opportunity to get some. Valuable experience for Hagler. Bad snap, nice catch on the keeper. Brought down by Joe Porter on the far side. Yep, that was an option play, and he, he, he made the all correct read. Uh -oh. The end uh -oh. of the play. That was right in front of the Rutgers bench. 
Hagler redshirted a year ago. The marketing major. There's Coach Petty. Nice man. Enjoyed talking to him this week. After the play. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. On the offense, number 65. 15 yards, second down. Yeah, he doesn't like that penalty now. That, he's had a number of foolish penalties today, no question about that. Tommy Burns whistled for the infraction that time. Senior from Flint, Michigan, transfer from Los Angeles Valley Community College. Ninth penalty for the Bison today. They entered the game as the least penalized team in the MEAC. 49 nothing Rutgers. Sets up second and about 25. And Hagler whiffed on that one. Is that going to be considered a pass or a fumble? No, no I think I they're going to call pass. it incomplete. Yep, incomplete pass. The referee the rule Jeff McGonaghy. Ruled his hand was moving forward. We'll take, let's take a look at it. Let's see. You make the call. Oh, no question. Well, well, well I don't know. I don't know. That's close. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Well, they better get this play off in a hurry. His hand was moving forward, but perhaps not yeah, before the ball that's popped out. Exactly right. <laughs> I don't think Rutgers is going to put up too much of a complaint. Howard just two of eleven on third downs. Hand off, Cornif, and he gets nowhere. And Howard will have to punt the ball for the ninth time today. You mentioned that you. Uh, chatted with Ray for Petty so did I and he says you know when we're playing a team like this the way we look at it is it's David versus Goliath and if we can play as hard as we can then at the very least we'll leave with our spirits high and then he paused and he said but if it's close entering the fourth quarter I want to win <laughs> <laughs> absolutely coach. Well, unfortunately for Howard it's not close at all over the head of Nuru who will just Drop kick it out of the end zone for a safety. Good decision. Now we get penalty markers on the play. <laughs> Good decision. That's exactly what you'd want your guy to do in that situation because uh, you know you, you'll take the, the ball here out back out of the back of the end zone here. Let's see how they rule this and what the flag is for. Legal touching. Yeah. Boy, when it goes bad, coach, it Illegal goes bad. Kicking on the offense. It's about as half the distance. The spot of the kick. Loss it down. Rutgers yep. takes over. Oh. First down. Yep. Well, oh. had good intentions. Yep. But the execution was not there, so Rutgers will have a chance to punch it in for six anyway. Let's see now. Let's see where they're going to spot this ball. They're going to spot the it. Distance, yeah. yeah. Oh, half the distance. The but where, 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 where did he? Let's see where he kicked it here. I could. Whoa. Wow, that, that wasn't even close. That was way over. That was a good call, but good about the seven-yard line. You like the form on the kick, though. Yeah, it was, well, you know, these guys are all soccer players, you know, that do this, you know. So that that's, well, that's a pretty good spot right there. So first and goal for the Scarlet Knights. Lovelace again, handoff Young, and his second touchdown. And no flags. I don't see a flag out there yet. Let's see if... Uh, <laughs> Let's see if Cordell's going to get this one a little bit easier. Yeah. So that's the fourth. Well, that actually does not go down as a turnover. That was just a loss of downs. Yep. May is, yep. In effect, it was a turnover, but it created a very short field. So Rutgers has had touchdown drives today. Four of their touchdowns have come on 12, 17, 30, and now one yard drive. Wow. Now that's when you're having a bad day when, when you give them that short of a field to work with. Watch Ito now get this ball up so fast. Man, that thing, uh, he really reminds me of uh, Matt Bryant, a young man I had kicked for me uh, when I was a head coach in NFL Europe, who's now the kicker for the Buccaneers. That is a great trait to have to get it up fast. Three touchdown runs by Rice, two by Leonard, and now two by the freshman Cordell Young. 56 0, Scarlet Knight.
Well, boy, a beautiful day here. The sun, uh, the sunshine is shining on Rutgers today. That's for sure. They've had a lot of good breaks in this game. A lot of turnovers, a lot of short field to work with. As we see uh, Ito here getting ready to kick it off here. Early in the fourth quarter. He's been pretty good. Well, first of all, he's had a lot of practice kicking off. He of sure has. And he's driven a number of them through the end zone. 56 nothing Scarlet Knights. Most points scored since 1974 against Colgate. This one doesn't quite get to the end zone. Sherman really had his bell rung on a return earlier. It's hit pretty hard on that one, too. He takes a shot right there, and our cameraman I noticed on the sideline took a, a shot well, right our, there as well. Our, our camera guys are tough. They all get their tetanus shots before every game. <laughs> And you see how he bounced right back yeah, up. He, he got back up, but I yep. tell you, he was staggered though. There was no question about it. I was almost calling for the trainer. <laughs> Kevin Malice with that hit, making the most of his opportunity. So Rutgers will take a 4-0 record into its Big East opener next Friday at USF. Another quarterback, Brian Johnson, number 13. This is the fourth now that's been in the game today. And we saw during pregame drills at one point there were five different quarterbacks taking snaps. Where they had everyone snapping the ball to them. <laughs> yeah, they they had as many quarterbacks as offensive linemen just about. But uh, again, when you run this style of offense, your quarterback is going to run the football. You got to have depth at that spot, no question. Still 11 minutes remaining. Howard's third game in its history against a Division I A opponent. Johnson on the keeper. Avoids a couple of people, and then he's finally brought down right at the 23 yard line. You know, Bob, now we have the second defense on the field for Rutgers. There's the yeah, other you know three what? quarterbacks. Yep, there, there they are. And I'll tell you what, these guys, they're just like the first defense. They can run. I mean, they converged on the ball there. There you see the signals coming from the quarterbacks for the next play. Well, they probably don't want to get kicked out of practice again. Out of the shotgun. Johnson scrambles and then falls down. Lost his footing and then was finished off by Chenry Lewis. Sophomore from Patterson, who grew up in Jamaica, moved to the United States when he was 15 years old. And yeah, this will go down as a sack. No question about it. Okay, Chenry, nice job. Patterson, New Jersey. So let's see if the snap is going to be a little bit easier for Nuru to handle than the previous one, which went way over his head and resulted in a loss of downs. And a one yard touchdown drive for the Scarlet Knights. Nuru's from Decatur, Georgia. Perfect snap. Short kick. Off the side of his foot. Back deep to return it was Tim Brown, but he will let it roll to a stop just shy of midfield. So Rutgers working on its second shutout in the last three weeks. They went four years between shutouts. Now they may get two of them in a three week period. That young man, the third one from the left. <laughs> right before we came out of break, we heard him say, Top 25, baby, top 25. <laughs> we told great. you they keep their eye on the rankings. That's great to see right there. A little bit of uh, <laughs> New Jersey pride right there. Young man has an outstanding chance of growing up to become a Jersey guy, doesn't he? Yes, sir. And, just, and once you're a Jersey guy, you are a Jersey guy for life. I don't care where you live. Well, well, you are a Jersey guy. Well, you're looking at one of them. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm a transplant. I count a little bit Jersey guy. You know, six years here. Well, I love the right bell jour. Lovelace on the option to keep it himself. And is run down from behind by Lockett. He has quit. Lovelace the ball carrier. In fact, we haven't seen any. Lack of effort on a single play by the Howard team today. Hey, they have played hard every single snap. Coach Petty really should be proud of that defense. In fact, if you look at the average per rush, they have done a better job against the Scarlet Knight rushing attack than North Carolina. 
Illinois or Ohio. Despite the score, uh, you know, the, the, that's not always indicative of how a team plays. They've played hard. It's made a lot of mistakes, bad mistakes. Tim Brown is wide to the left. Lovelace will keep it himself. Tripped up on the play Lovelace by Daniel Pierce. Just inside the 45 yard line. Under eight minutes remaining in the ball game. Yeah, and uh, Jabu Lovelace now that's a, he's got this is really important for him. Uh, there would probably be a little bit different style of offense if anything would ever happen to Mike Teal. Because Jabu is probably a little better option quarterback right now Although he can throw it too now but he, he can run. And uh, they would probably implement the option a little bit more in this attack uh, if he were the quarterback. Third down and five. Lovelace out of the shotgun high snap tough catch keeps it himself has the first down he turns upfield to the 37 yard line and you just men mentioned that uh, when Lovelace is out there you see more of an option you were telling us last night and you mentioned earlier in the telecast that you're involved in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers telecast the three game show yep. and you got a chance to see a pretty good option quarterback at the NFL level and you were telling us last night that you think you think we're going to see more Quarterback options no in the NFL no as a result question. of Michael Vick's success? After the Atlanta Falcons ran the college option play out of the shotgun nine times last week for 150 something yards against the Bucs. Uh, I will promise you, you're going to see that play in the National Football League with every team that has a quarterback that can run. Yeah, but they don't have anyone like Michael Vick, no, do they? Who does? I mean, that is. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Linton fumbled. And it's picked up by Howard's wow. Thomas Claiborne. And he's, he's going gone. to take it all he's the way gone. unless Tim Brown can run him down from behind and he can't. So there goes the Rutgers shutout to Mitri Linton on his first carry of his career. Fumbles the football and Thomas Claiborne runs it all the way back for a score. Unofficially a 70 yard return for a touchdown for the senior from Pittsburgh. Well, of course, that won't make the uh, Coach Seattle. They're very happy. I mean, he's like any defensive coordinator. He always like to put a zero up on the board. There he is talking to Dimitri right there. Said that Dimitri would really appreciate it if you would <laughs> just try to put a little better grip on that football, young man. Nobody feels worse than the young Dimitri, young guy out of Oakland Park, Florida. So uh, Howard, this is the first time they're attempting an extra point today, and there's a little bit of confusion. Like the the uh, guy who's supposed to hold wasn't on the field. Yep. Rodney Slappy, <laughs> so they had to burn a timeout. A little minor detail. We've got to have the holder out there. Howard is charged with their final timeout of the half. And Vberg, the freshman from Germany, will be in to attempt the extra point. He's three of four on extra points this season. This will be his first today. You know, and he's not a soccer player. But, you know, of course, I coached in NFL Europe and Germany. Uh, football is big in Germany. A lot of club football, a lot of young guys coming up that can play the game. Thomas Claiborne with a 70 yard fumble return for a touchdown. Howard gets on the board for the first time with six and a half minutes remaining. Bob Picozzi, Doug Graber back at Rutgers where Thomas Claiborne young man on the bench there to the right just returned a fumble 70 yards for a touchdown Howard's first points of the day the kickoff by Mendoza only a second of the day and it will go out of bounds at the 19 yard lines all but one of Rutgers touchdowns today on the ground Doug yeah and of course a nice job of utilizing Brian Leonard uh, Ray Rice both of them had uh, outstanding days putting the ball in the end zone here you see Leonard with his second and here comes uh, Mr. Ray Rice and look at his power right there to carry folks to the end zone. Here he goes again. The young by the guy from New Rochelle, New York. Here's an outside zone play. Great cut. Boy, you see that strength again. Here's your second team now. This is Cordell Young getting his first touchdown that counted. There's a couple have been called back. Yep. Here's the second. He paid the price there. He took a pretty good shot. Tony Soprano liked it. And the Rutgers fans are very, very excited. There's a look at Ray Rice, who rushed for 105 yards today, his sixth consecutive 100-yard rushing performance in the ninth of his career. Handoff, 
Corcoran. Out to the 25 yard line as we go inside the six minute mark. So Howard will return home after this one and host Fort Valley State. And then after that, all of the games will be conference games. Winston-Salem, Morgan State, North Carolina A&T, Norfolk State, South Carolina State, Bethune, Cookman, and Delaware State. I promise you that Greg Schiano, his in his mind, he has already moved forward uh, to the Rutgers game, that huge game in the Big East Conference next Friday night. Against USF. And uh, they'll be flying down to Tampa on a Thursday and getting ready for that one. Here's the pitch out to Linton. Hangs on to the ball this time, but can't get anywhere. Dowdy made the stop as we hit the five-minute mark. This is the second time this year a MEAC team has played a 1A opponent. Florida A&M lost to Miami 51-10, and also today North Carolina A&T of the MEAC is playing Louisiana Lafayette. And five 1A teams already this season have defeated or five 1AA teams have already defeated 1A teams. Portland State beat New Mexico. Richmond beat Duke. Southern Illinois beat Indiana. Montana State beat Colorado. And New Hampshire, the number one ranked 1AA team in the country, beat Northwestern. You know, in Montana State, where I also was the head coach, beat Colorado. And then they, they turned came around. back and got beat by a Division II team. So, right. hey, you never know. Corker in with the handoff again. And Rutgers will have to punt as we hit the four minute mark. You know, when you're a coach on the sideline in a game like this, I, I, I you know, nobody enjoys it when you're on the wrong side. But I, I promise you, I'm watching every single play to make sure my guys are playing hard, hustling, running to the football, and they have done that without fail this whole football game. My hat's off to Howard. Radigan has averaged 53.8 yards in his four punts today. And this is another wow. beauty. This one's got great hang time. Fair catch called by Leonard Moore. Not to be confused with Pro Football Hall of Famer Lenny Moore. Baltimore Colt great. The Rutgers defense, this is what they've allowed this year. And keep in mind that included in that are the seven points that Howard scored today That's right. with the Rutgers defense on the sideline. They scored it off the Rutgers offense, but they've given up 30 points in four games. You know, and, and they were fifth in the nation in points allowed, and that should go down uh, with this performance today. So let's see who's going to be in there at quarterback this time. We got another new quarterback, don't we? Darrell Turner, the fifth different quarterback for Howard. And the handoff to Whitaker. Picks up about 14 yards on the play. And I'm actually seeing, now this is a lot of, uh, this is the Rutgers third defense now that's on the field. Uh, the, yeah, this is a whole new defense out on the field for Rutgers. That whole sideline's pulling for these guys now. First and 10, Howard. Darrell Turner, the fifth different quarterback for the Bison today. Hands off Whitaker and Munoz made the stop behind the line of scrimmage with an assist from Malice. There's a look at Courtney Green, who had an interception today for the Scarlet Knights. He blocked a field goal attempt last week. After today, Rutgers will go on the road for three straight weeks. USF in the Big East opener, then on to the Naval Academy in two weeks. And then on to Pittsburgh on October 21st before they come home to host Connecticut on October 29th. The game against UConn is a Sunday night game nationally televised. There's a pitch on the reverse. And the carry by Rodney Slappy. And here's a look at that. Rutgers schedule. So the entire Big East schedule ahead. Only one non-league game left. That will be against the Naval Academy, which uh, Davies' offense is at least oh. a little bit similar to this one. Uh, yeah, but but 
but I'll tell you, Navy gives everybody fits uh, with that, uh, with Coach Johnson and that offense. That old they Georgia run. Southern oh, offense, which sure Paul is. Johnson ran at Georgia Southern. Yeah. Won yeah. a national championship with And him. he ran it at Navy when he was the coordinator at Navy, and I was the head coach at Rutgers. We beat him right here in the stadium. They're a very tough team to prepare for. Very tough. On the keeper, Turner. And we'll get a penalty marker in the play. And then on top of everything else, you were talking about how Howard, you haven't seen any quit in Howard today. No. <laughs> You're never going to see anyone from the service academy's quit on a nope. single play. No. Nope. <laughs> never. It's not in their DNA, is it? No, it really isn't. And uh, holding, holding on the offense, number 79. 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. Penalty called on Torrance Simon. And Johnson's done a terrific job. Since taking over the Naval Academy. It really has. And of course, you know, when I was the years I was here at Rutgers, uh, Bob Sutton was the coach at Army. We played him uh, every year and we're fortunate enough to beat him every year, but they were running the wishbone. And boy, I'll tell you what, that was a tough, tough game every year. And, and really the preparation for that game was the hard part. Bob Sutton now the defensive coordinator with the, the New York Jets. Under first year head coach Eric Mangini. They have a Look out. big game this week at Buffalo. Up the left sideline. A terrific gain on the play for John Garner, his first carry of the season, and it's a 28 yarder. Speaking of the, uh, well, let's get another look at this run by Garner. You know, most of the kids on this defense right now are on what's called, it would be on the prep teams from week to week, given the, their offensive look. And this is great that they at least get, can get out here and get an opportunity to play, get the feet wet. First and 10, Bison at the 29. Turner to throw. He completes it. Right side to Lawrence Helms. His third catch of the year, uh, of the season. Howard will be taking a, the bus ride home tonight, but out there, I'll guarantee you, they have uh, nothing to be embarrassed about. And Rutgers, in no way, shape, or form, uh, can be accused of running up the score either in this football game. Nope. No question about that. This is the furthest penetration for the Howard offense today. As they have reached the Scarlet Knights 23 yard line at the one minute mark. Boy, Turner looks, or someone inexperienced, looks pretty calm there. He sure does. Changing the play, pitches the ball forward. The old shovel pass. I don't know that I Laker. have ever seen a game where four quarterbacks have played in the game. Five, I'm sorry, five. I, I know I've never seen that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Every quarterback that was taking snaps uh, in the pregame has played. And even some who were? Wow. <laughs> Third and one at the 30-second mark. Turner scrambles, throws, incomplete. Broken up on the play by Anthony Miller with 25 seconds to go. And it will be fourth down, and obviously the Bison will go for it. So Howard will lose its seventh consecutive game. First three this year, last four a year ago. And now the remaining crowd, and many of them have already headed for the parking lots to party. Yeah. Imploring Great. the Rutgers defense to make a, a stop. Great tradition here at Rutgers, the tailgate party. A lot of the students haven't left, tell you that. Turner rolls left, throws Got on him. the run, and he has his man Haslam. And he stopped just shy of the goal line. Now the clock stops clock. until they reset the chains. Of course, I think he's going to spike it here to stop the clock. Nope. Turner on the keeper. Now they, so they're either going to have to call a timeout here, or they will not score. So the clock is running and down they five. Not. They did get it stopped. Nope. That'll do it. So for the first time since 1980, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights under Greg Schiano are four and zero. Oh. And now, although uh, Greg Schiano says he doesn't worry about such things, you better believe the Rutgers fans do. The, the question is, when the latest national rankings come out tomorrow, will the Scarlet Knights crack the top 25 for the first time in 30 years? They entered this week 28th in those same rankings. 
So if a couple of teams ahead of them lose, Scarlet Knights may jump in there for the first time since 1976. They win it 56-7. Back in Piscataway, New Jersey, where Rutgers has defeated Howard 56-7 to raise its record to 4-0. Big day for Ray Rice, 23 carries, 105 yards. Brian Leonard, 10 carries, 62 yards. Leonard had two touchdowns, Rice had three. So it's not like the first four games don't count, Doug. Every time you play, it counts. But the real season begins for the Scarlet Knights next Friday in Tampa with the Big East opener against USF. Yeah, and, and that is a huge game in the conference. Let's take a look at the conference right now. You see, of course, uh, a great start for the Big East. Look at that. The first uh, five teams in the conference have lost one game between them. An outstanding start by Pittsburgh, Louisville, Rutgers, West Virginia, South Florida. Syracuse is playing better. Uh, Cincinnati had a tough loss to Virginia Tech today. But, man, that game next week with Rutgers and South Florida, that is going to be a barn burner. And did you see enough from Mike Teal today that would lead you to be encouraged if you're Greg Ciano? Uh, I'm still a little bit nervous right. about that going into this game, to be very honest with you. And, and of course, here you see a uh, fine, uh, fine tight end for Rutgers. Harris going down the sideline. A lot of hard hitting, a lot of good action here today, and a lot of happy Rutgers fans. All right, Doug, thank you very much. Enjoyed working with you. Thanks to our stage manager, Dick Copley, our statisticians, Rich Frieschen, and Brian Prelu, our director, Eric Eisenstadt, and our major, How is our producer. So for Doug Gray, Rob Bob Picosi, thanks so much for joining us. And so long from Piscataway, New Jersey, where Rutgers has defeated Howard 56-17. With People PC Online, you get unlimited internet access for just $10.95 a month. And you get accelerator technology free for an entire year. That's a $60 value. Visit up to five web pages in the time it used to take to visit one.